Hey guys, this is John Lee here. You saw a punch in the thumbnails. Right? You thought, like, what the fuck? Why is John punching at the screen? I'm gonna explain to you the real deal behind compliance. You know? Compliance, not compliance. You heard this term. And a lot of white gaming coaches like to believe that, oh, it's either compliance or non-compliance in the game. Compliance, non-compliance. Blah, 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 blah. What if I told you that's bullshit? It's more than compliance, not compliance. That's, they like to have this metaphor. It's kind of like a wall. I'll show you. Let's see, this is a wall here. They believe that once you're here, and this is the women, once you get up to the wall, you're stuck. So they claim that most guys try to drive the car through it, not go around the wall, or not trying to deal with the problem and go around the wall. But I'm going to tell you why that's bullshit. First of all, the idea is that everyone has a different value system. A different value, a different sexual market value. So if you were a tall white guy, for example, all you have to deal with is just the wall. So this wall to them is like objections dealing or statements of empathy. That means, hey, what's the real problem here? She tells you whatever, and you deal with the wall, you go around it. That's a great theory. If you're an Asian guy without any value, this wall is going to be a big thing. So... The best way to really understand it of sexual market value and how this compliance, non-compliance thing is bullshit is for a tall white guy, they might have to deal with maybe a couple objections here. One, two, three. And she'll go home with you. It's called seeing that pole. She's go home with you. But I tell you that's complete bullshit. Hey, man, what's up? So this is going to be a very good lesson today. So three objections, but for an Asian guy, and I've tried with really hot girls who are like 18, who's a model and all this shit. I had to deal with like 40 minutes worth of objections. And I thought to myself, wait a minute, compliance, not compliance. Not compliance because she doesn't see the value. So this is how the chart works. So this is what they call V-A-L-U-E, value. This is your SMV up here. And this is what they call the sales techniques. Does that make sense? So the sales is over here and your value is over here. So this is what they call the line of fuckability up here. Fuckability, okay? Sometimes not everyone hovers over the line. That means if you're a tall white guy, you just have you don't have to do much to get over that line. If you're a short Asian guy or short Indian guy who basically has a very big Indian accent, you're not going to get very close to that line. You see that? No matter how much value, it has nothing to do with compliance, non-compliance. It's going to be nothing but non-compliance because the value is not there. If that makes sense, give it a thumbs up. If there's going to be less and less people watching these lives, guess what? You get less lives. I'm just going to tell the truth. I'm going to preach it. I don't give a fuck whether or not you guys like it or not. I'm just going to tell you guys the truth. So having said that, what if it's not compliance, non-compliance? Because now... You can see that some people have more compliance to begin with by being tall, white, tall, black, tall, tall, value. That plays a big role. What if we break down the game? What if I can explain a better metaphor than just compliance, not compliance? Instead of using the wall example, crashing the wall and going around it, dealing with it, what if dealing with it is not going to get you through the wall if you're lower value? If you're lower value, for example, I'm a short Asian guy. Just by saying what's wrong or a statement of empathy, you look scared or you look like you're bored. That's not going to get you through that wall. The best way I like to think about day game is into four pieces. Four pieces or maybe more. Number one, the jab. So what is a jab? How does a jab work? In boxing, you kind of turn the hand to the knuckles here and for your feet, be transferring the weight right into the opponent's face. But jab is not the biggest punch. Tuck in your chin so you don't get knocked out. The jab is the conversational ability back and forth with the women. This is what they call the natural conversation is the jab. The biggest thing with these guys who are higher value, okay? So if a guy is like a higher SMB, higher sexual market value, a white guy who's tall, maybe six foot four, his jab might have more power, right? His jab might have more power than a shorter Asian guy's 
right cross. So the right cross is a different punch, but let's say this is called spicing. So basically what happens is that the neck is down, both hands are up, but you turn your body, you kind of twist the hips and you twist the shoulders. It's kind of like your feet on the bottom is putting on a cigarette. So when you do a punch, it's like this, you turn. <clears throat> So it's a jab, right cross, okay? Jab, right cross, jab, right cross, jab, right cross. So if your game is all natural, your game's gonna be like this in a boxing match with the women. You gotta remember, the women will fight back. They will try to all reject you. So they'll become the wall, but this is not the best example. So you're jabbing. If you only jab, she's gonna right cross you right in the face. She's gonna hook you, she's gonna uppercut you, but you're still just jabbing. So this is why most Asian guys, how they dig in. Higher cute, so they right cross. And it's all jabs. Oh, wow, oh, cool, I agree with you. Oh, nice, kissing her ass. And they get knocked out. So what can we say the right cross is? The right cross can be called um, spicing, emotional spicing. Push, pull, teasing can be the right cross. Does that make sense? So the right cross, the best way of understanding is that's when you tease her. That's when you're like, oh my God, what's wrong with you? Something's off about you. I don't know what it is, right? But Or it could be a push-pull. You know, it could be like, oh, I like that about you, right? But something's really messed up about you. Okay? So it's like a push-pull or you can challenge her. Oh, you said you are a nurse? Come on, there's no way you're a nurse. You see, like, is this no way you're a nurse? So this is like a right cross. Why would you do right cross? Because you want to keep her on the line. Okay? This this is a great analogy. Absolutely, Andre. This, this is exactly... Is better than the analogy of crashing the wall and going around it. So what happens if you keep right crossing like RSD or London Day game? So what they like to do is assumption stories. Boom, self-amusement. Now they're making a joke like, oh my God, you look like a squirrel. You look like this with your legs. You look like this and that. You look like this and that. You look like, you look like statements and they always try and make a self-amusement and push pull and then challenging and then teasing. Does that make sense? So this is how London Day game does it. Like a haymaker, like a big one. <clears throat> and then try to do it right cross, right cross, right cross, right cross. And then when they're building that connection, they're doing what? Jab, light jabs, jab, 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 jab. So they wonder why they keep getting knocked out. They wonder why there's such a huge volume of approaches because they're doing boom. She's... So they have a huge volume of approaches. You see that? You see that? So that's why it doesn't work. But you gotta also imagine that for these tall white guys, they don't have to do what they call a hook. So what's a hook punch? A hook is you tuck your chin this way, it's very close to your face, it's kind of like here. You just have to lift up the elbow. <clears throat> and it, it hurts. When you hit someone like this, you knock them the fuck out. But the problem is that hook is like a flirt. You can't hook all day. You're not Mike Tyson. You're not like boom, 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 boom. You see what I mean? So this is like the PUA who flirts too much. You know those PUAs just continue like, oh, I'm just being flirty here. I'm just being flirty. I'm just hooking. Flirty, 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 flirty. No, no, you're not Mike Tyson. So by doing too much of that, and the problem with London day game is that they don't actually flirt very often. White people do not flirt. White people like to right cross, they love to tease because they always believe in the mystery method that you need to spend like 10 hours with her before she's going to fuck you in a day. So what happens is they have this punch missing, but these tall white guys are all natural and they're only jabbing and because they're like taller, six foot four, they got more power and value than you, more value. So what happens is when you try to do the same shit, you get knocked out. You get knocked the fuck out. Does that make sense? I think it's starting to make a lot of sense to you now. That means when you try to transfer over their game, you try to like, okay, I can be natural too, but the Asian guy is so creepy. He couldn't even get the proper punch down. Right? He can't even get the proper punch down. He's just like, mm, like maybe like this, like a wing chun punch. He gets knocked out. 
<clears throat> so I like to see the game as um, a lot of jabs, a lot of conversational ability. And whenever she gives you problems, then you right cross her right in the face. Because you got to imagine, how does the woman really treat you in day game? Every single time a woman wants to say, I got to get going, she's trying to knock you out right like this. You can see it coming. Because she, imagine that she drops her other hand. I got to get going. Right? Most guys get knocked the fuck out. Or she's like, oh, I'm getting bored. Like, ah, nice to meet you. Thank you for that compliment. She drops this hand. So what do you do when something like that happens? I counter punch. Make sense? I get the fuck out of the way and then boom. So I get out of the fucking way. Like in crowd, my God, we just blocking the hit with the head all the way. Blocking it. It's called counter punch. So you slide out your face right to her face. Why counter punch? So you wonder how does Johnny Lee do it? Because I'm exactly like Mayweather Jr. My fighting style is at Mayweather Jr. So in day game, to keep her on the line, how does he win 50 matches in a row? How does he adapt? It's very simple. Every time she wants to try and knock me out, every time she wants to leave, a non-compliance happens at that point. Rather than using statements of empathy, because I may not have the same value as a tall white guy, like I said, whoever is the other guy, this is value. This is the sales technique or game. And this is the line of fuckability. If your value is not high enough, no matter what you do, you will not reach the line of fuckability. So therefore, even if you statements of empathy, she may not see the value in you to use it. Hope that makes sense. And like for the other guy in case he's here, the jab represents the conversational ability, the back and forth. This is the natural conversation of the jab. And for tall white dating coaches, that jab is more powerful than the short Asian guy's right cross. Right cross is just teasing and, you know, push pull, challenging. It's like London day game. They do way too many right crosses, right crosses, right crosses, right crosses. And she knocks them out. And every time she tries to knock you out, she's going to drop this hand here. So it gives you ability to, like, counter punch. Slip out, boom, right in the face. So what happens if she gets hit in the face? Is she going to walk away? The answer is no. She's going to be like, boom. Now she's back in the fight. Now she's respecting you. You have lowered down her, you know, life bar a little bit, like a video game. You have lowered down her life bar so that you can go back to the jab. It's always back to the jab. So guys wonder how you same day lay in that fucking one shot, one kill. Learn when to right cross so you can get her back on the line. And the line is like a Jordan Belfort concept. The concept is I like to believe all the day game is exactly the same. The same as empathy only works for positive stereotype men. It can work for anyone. Even in the beginning, a statement of empathy might be good. Okay. But you got to think about the line. Okay, MJ, let's talk about this. So in the beginning, let's say all the day games are the same. This is like um, openers. This transitions. This is more like teasing, flirting. This is social comfort later on. This is insta day. ID. Insta day. But to get to this stage, right, in the beginning, you might use a statement of empathy. Hey, I didn't want to bother you or I know it's random, right? You might box her back on the line. But does she see the value in you? And the answer is no. At this point, there's a brick wall. She doesn't see the value in you. So rather than what they consider, which is using other statements of empathy, hey, what's, up? what's the problem here? I would say you got to hit harder. You got a haymaker this one. You need a real powerful right punch to knock her out. It's not punching a wall. It's not punching a wall. It's like Chris Brown and Rihanna. So basically, oh my God, what's with you? You're like a six, but you act like a 10. What's that? And she's like, what the fuck? Or, oh my God, like, what happened to your femininity? Like, you just got masculine all of a sudden. What's with the society these days? She's like, oh shit. When you had the fucking attitude, now she's back on the fucking line. You have to deal with this first. And to deal with this is not statements of empathy because she doesn't see the value in you. See that value? She doesn't see the value. The sales stopped here. And now, you, now a lot of you guys are like, oh, shit, John's right. Unless you're a tall white guy, you can, this wouldn't be an issue because this value thing's already there. Once you establish the value, now they're back on the line. Does it make sense? Jab, 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 jab. And whenever she wants to leave again, you got to box her back. Maybe push, pull back on the line. 
White people don't have to be on the line. The reason why white people believe it's a numbers game is 10% is because they're not following the Mayweather process. They're not following the Jordan Belfort keeping on the line process. They are actually doing a numbers game, not a game of conversions, but a numbers game. I don't believe there's such a thing as numbers game. If you look at my infield throughout Europe, very first approach. And how did I raise my value? I dress well. They're all fucking communists. You don't think that helps? You're an idiot. Those people are like fucking communists. They don't have much money. So when you dress well, you become more husband material. You raise your value. Because they don't see you as a boyfriend material as an Asian guy. I'm just going to tell you guys the truth. Even if there's not a lot of people here, you're going to benefit. The ones who see afterwards, give a thumbs up. Compliance, not compliance. Like I said, now that you know the game, if the jab is the conversational skill and the right cross is the you know counter punching to keep her on the line, once in a while, if you keep doing this, what happens? Will she see your pattern? She'd be like, I, I understand what he's doing. Now she can see a left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left, right. She can see the punches coming. So now she's going to say, I'm going to be smart here. I'm going to do an uppercut and just say, I got to get going on a boyfriend. She's going to hit you from a different angle and she's going to walk away. She's going to be off the line. She's going to be off the line. Does that make sense? So therefore, it's good to have a different variety of uppercuts. Uppercut is the same as touching her and the shoulders, holding her hands, all that shit. Does that make sense? So your game could be very, that means you can use conversational skills, a bit of teasing, but that always back to the jab, right? And whenever she gives you a problem and she tries to knock you out, I gotta get going. She's gonna drop that hand so you can counter punch. Does that make sense? You can counter punch. Now she's kept on the line. And I shouldn't be revealing these kind of secrets of the game, but I'm just telling you, Mayweather can do it. I can do it. It might require a very high IQ and a very like fast processing speed of reading her and countering her very quickly. But I'm telling you a big secret of the game. Give a thumbs up if you like it. And once in a while, if you can do all three well, one, two, once in a while, flirt. One, one, two, one, one, two. Boom, once in a while, flirt. Does that make sense? If you can do all that, you need to throw in something different, uppercut. So how does uppercut happen? Hands here, down. You gotta go down here because you gotta protect your face. Up. Same as the jab. Just like jab. Very short jab. Make sense? Because problems counter punch, mostly jabs. Most even if you flirt, right? Guess what happens after a jab? It's always back to the after the hook, it's always back to the jab, isn't it? All the time, it's always, that means if you flirt with a girl, like, oh, just looking at your legs, right? Sorry, it's just, you must be very um, flexible. Always back to jab. Anyways, I was saying, does that make sense? So it's not a game of compliance, non-compliance. For those guys who are thinking it's like a white dating coach who believes that, you know, they always believe that, oh, you hit a wall, you got your statements of empathy, you know what's up, and go around the wall. But like I said, not everyone has a high value. There's some guys who have to do so much objection stealing. <coughs> sorry. And the value is over here, up and down. It's how much value you have. And this is sales techniques here, sales or a persuasion game. It doesn't matter how much sales techniques you have. If you can't get over that line. So it's a line of value, the SMV here. That means you can raise your SMV. Does that make sense? So this boxing analogy is a lot more accurate than the actual analogy of crashing a brick wall. This is why my students have like fucking 400 laid in poll testimonials and they only have like less than five for data. Because they believe that, you know, for white people, they're lazy. They're so lazy in the game. They always have it so easy and they believe it's a numbers game, 10%. My mentor here, he has a 90% or 96% of the numbers closing. Like they'll come on over. There's been like fucking 13 lays this month for him. What the fuck? <laughs> Not even positive stereotype. But the point is this. <clears throat> if you have less value like me, and of course there are other guys who have more of a Mayweather or a Manny Pacquiao kind of game. There are guys who, who do a lot of jabs, a lot of conversation, a lot of teasing. A lot of teasing, a lot of 
you know, a lot of hooks. They just keep punching. They don't even give a shit. They just do combos. But to do that, you must be a taller, positive stereotype with muscles. Because to do all that combination, like in the game, you might think, okay, that's a good game, but that's not very transferable. Because a short Asian guy, for example, if he tried to do all this shit like Manny Pacquiao, it would be like, hey, I thought you were cute. I want to come by and say hi, but we're not just joking around. Oh, sorry, you, but you look like a whatever, but push pull. But something's off about you. I, so I thought you were interesting. And then they'll go right to the challenging. I thought I disagree with you. And then they'll be like, push pull. Well, it's great that whatever, but something's off about you. Or, you know, those shoes don't really match your shirt. And then it just they just keep doing so much gamey shit. To me, punches. And I always believe it's not always up to me to win the fight in the boxing. This is just the first part of the thing before social comfort. It's not up to me. It's actually up to her. It's not you that try to do something. Imagine you in the boxing match. I know this great routine. I'm going to do this, number two, and I'm going to do this. And then uppercut. I'm just going to keep doing that one, two, three, four. Every single time you do the same shit. And guess what happens? You get all rejected every single time. Does that make sense? You get all rejected every single time. Because now you don't have a boxing flow. I know it sounds very esoteric. But the whole compliance, not compliance thing. The whole compliance, not compliance thing is bullshit. That is just a way of saying, I got super high value. I just have to not fuck it up for white game coaches. So for the fourth person that's showing up, let's recap. If you guys like what you're hearing, give it a thumbs up. What I'm saying is white dating coaches always crashes and they feel like they're stuck. They're like, go crash into the fucking wall. Because you go around it, you have to deal with the statements of empathy, go around it. I disagree. Like I'm saying, if they have higher value and this is their sales or game tactics, they can go over the line. And for someone with less value, less SMB here, it's not going to go as high. Does that make sense? They don't have enough value, enough power. And sometimes in day game, if you don't have that emotional impact, just like boxing, without the emotional impact, when you guys hear me say like a tease, like, oh my God, like what's wrong with you? Like something's off about you. You got like a booger in your nose or something. Like, it's like a booger in your nose. But like, you can feel it. Can you not? You feel like a power. With And white people already have that power, but through the SMV. It's kind of like, like uh, their game is like butter bean or a heavyweight boxer. Their jab might be enough to shake the women. Their jab might shake the women. Therefore, they might not have as much game because their value shakes her. But when you're a shorter guy like me, when you flirt, right, you got to actually feel it. See that? You kind of like feel it, especially looking at your legs is like very nice. It's very flexible. You have to feel it. You, you all can feel that. Like, you know, it's wrong with you. And just like when I'm connecting, right, for example, now I start speaking in an empathetic way. You guys can feel it. This is where the emotional impact comes from. You have to wear down her life bar. So it's not so much about crashing into a wall and then going around it. It's nothing like that. It's more like how can you counter punch her so you can wear down her life bar. And when you wear down enough of her life bar, then you can finally do the social comfort because you need to build the attraction. So a lot of these... Coaches who are six foot four white guys with the autistic face, tranny fuckers, self proclaim high league. When they when they tell you these advice and they're higher value than you, and they don't have to take much to get over the objections because she already sees them as a sexual partner. Then when you try to do it and you don't have the same punching power, when you try to jab and you try to do all this shit, and you don't have the same punching power. I guess what happens? It's not transferable. Then you wonder why does it not work? Because you don't have the same SMB. It's like you don't have the same genetic advantages. This is why they dismiss attraction building. They dismiss they dismiss push pose. They dismiss teasing. They dismiss all that challenging stuff. Why do they dismiss it? Because you tell white dating coaches who are natural in it are just vibing their SMV. If you guys understand this, give it a thumbs up. They're vibing their SMV trying to win. But since they have such little game, because they're mostly doing jabs. But here's the problem. And of course, uppercuts means a touch. And just in the way you might uppercut, 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 too much fucking touching. You see how creepy that? You can't fight a boxing match by touching on it. 
And that's what he does. Flirts and touches, like Mike Tyson or Prince Nassim. There's a lot of uppercuts, lunges at you, uppercuts. Okay? Sorry, neighbors outside just ignore that. They're looking at me, but I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. Okay? So now that you understand this, if it's a boxing match, it's not just going against the wall and compliance, non-compliance. And you understand the game is a boxing match. Your very first piece. Like Chris Brown to Rihanna. I know that sounds awful. I know it sounds politically incorrect. But we're speaking metaphorically speaking. You must establish a value. You must build some kind of attraction in the beginning. Without attraction in the beginning. So by being a better product, like I said, the value here is higher. So when the other sales technique is, by being a better product, is not transferable. It's not transferable. That means when you're only teaching jabs on how to be natural, that's some kind of, I'm going to be natural, natural. It's not enough. That's all I'm saying. So you can box her back on the line. And you wanted to know, like, how did John Lee do all this shit? When you look at my new infields, you're like, what the fuck? This is exactly how I do it. And I'm giving this away. Why, why the fuck would I give this away? Because I want to prove, logically speaking, the guy with the most student testimonials, that this concept of compliance, non-compliance is bullshit. Just like before when I talk about how everything is a uh, green, yellow, or red. That means, and they just focus on the game. Where are they stuck? Where is the non-compliance? But they're only focusing on game. They're not focused. And game has like four categories. Don't forget that. Looks, money, stats, plus game. We all know that shit, right? We all know that. We've seen this many times. But game has like four categories. Like I said before, you know, social calibration, social skills, SS, emotional intelligence, and also game persuasion, okay? That means there's a lot of pieces in here that you can mark as green, red, or yellow. Compliance, not compliance. It's not just the game. It's not just the game. There's other pieces. So these kind of ideas is about high volume and very, very low scale. That's not transferable. I mean, do you really think a white dating coach's jab is transferable to an Asian guy? If an Asian guy did the same jab, right? And he's not a big, tall guy with a genetic advantage. What happens with that job? You think he'll knock out that woman mentally and get her to submit? It's a game of submission. It's a game of submission in day game. And every single game, like, like Jordan Belfort always says, every sale is exactly the same. It's just keeping her on the line. I believe and every single approach is the same. I'm just keeping her on the line. And she is the one that gives me the line. She's the one who... Wants to leave. Every time she, like I said, for the new people, every time the girl wants to knock you out, she's dropping this hand. Like this. Most guys get knocked out. I got to get going. I got boyfriend. Most guys get knocked out. But if you knew how to block that punch, you can knock her back out. If you know how to block and hit, boom. She'll be back on the line. If that makes sense to you, give it a thumbs up. If it, does, it doesn't seem like you guys get it. If that's the case, then now you realize you look at RSD, for example. All they do is write crosses, self-amuse, self-amuse, tease, cocky, funny, self-amuse, touch, touch, uppercut. So most of their game is right crosses and uppercuts. So it's a lot of right crosses, right crosses, right uppercuts. You do that too many times, you get knocked out in the side or in the front because there's no social skills. So you got to understand, this is a boxing match. What the fuck is Elite 30? And you look at Mayweather Jr. When you saw him doing the Philly shell defense, you see him like holding his mitts like this. If you're a boxer, you see him like he's always ducking around all the punches. He never gets hit, right? And he hits back. He, he's a counter puncher. This Philly shell, this weird fucking defense. So what is Mayweather doing? If you understand Mayweather, you understand my game a lot, how it's done. And when you look at the infields again, you'll be like, fuck, John's so fucking right. It's very simple. The Philly show that defense, if you have a good defense, it means you have a good stance. So when you're fighting, you need a good fighting stance. And crab my guy, right? I stand kind of like here. So a guy punches me in the face, I can block and hit him in the face. <clears throat> and if he hit me on the side, me maker, I can block and hit, frame him up, kick him in the balls. <clears throat> like this, block, hit, block, hit, counter punch. Kick him in the balls. 
So the stance is almost like the 45 degrees when you're standing and talking to her. When they, you try to face her like this, your face is very exposed. Does that make sense? So parts of the elite 30 is the defense. The offense is the punching power. And, you know, when you're hitting the flirts and stuff like this, this is what they call the emotional intelligence. This is the same as the punching power. That punching power can go through the wall that white people are not getting. Because white people think, oh, I'm stopped here. Now I got to stop and go around this statement of empathy. I call out what's wrong. Now I can move forward. But sometimes you can pull a woman without dealing with objections. You can pull her all the way back to your place. You can still pull her all the way without dealing with objections. And then later on, deal with it in the bedroom. You don't have to see the pull. You learn a lot of inferior technologies. And you might think, oh, because John's talking about another dating coach. John is bashing another dating coach. But you look at her site and you'll be like, oh, my God, he's giving a lot of good advice videos. It looks good. Who gives a fuck if it sounds good? It's not about sound good advice. It's about game that actually works. That's transferable. 400 testimonials for dating versus what? Three? Come on now. I mean, the things I'm telling you, you guys are, no offense, but I think some of you are too fucking stupid to understand it. But if you actually open up your mind and you stop being offended, you'll realize. Because <coughs> I don't see that many thumbs up. You guys don't get it. <coughs> so compliance, not compliance. What is it really? It's about value. That's all it is. It's just about value. If you get stuck in the wall, just not. If you play a game like you're a tall white guy all the time, right? You're always going to have it easier. Your jab is going to knock her out. A few jabs. And maybe you have to do what they call framing. You might do one right cross and you might do one hook. And maybe one touch and then you feel like you get the number and that's going to convert 10% of the time. But what if I'm telling you? If you want to play the game like me, right? It has no value. You must play the game fully. You must knock her out. So once you knock her out, then you can deal with social comfort. Then you can get the instant date. And then you can worry about, you know, using the escalation ladder and doing a same day late. But we're not talking about all the other extra shit. And you might be thinking, John, why is there so much steps to the game? Why, why is there so much step? Because game is a value delivery system. I'll say this again. Game is a value delivery system. And every single time you're trying to keep her on the line, the line of compliance is not compliance, non-compliance. It's not like on or off at which point. It's more like you can box her back on the line. Because when the woman wants to walk away, she doesn't see the value, the word value again in you. Oh, yeah, I think it going. And just like, thank God, what's with you, right? Like, you got like a booger in your nose or she's looking around and it's like, oh, did Black Panther just like flew behind me or something? Or Superman flew behind me or something? She's like, what the fuck? No, 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 no. It's just, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit distracted. Now she faces you again and she's back on the line. Don't you get it? She's back on the line. So that non-compliance have become compliance. And you think to yourself, John, this, a lot of you don't understand it yet. A lot of you don't understand it yet. But if you did understand it, you, you'll understand when I in your coach people, I keep the women on the line for the students. I know exactly how to adapt to her. There's, there's things about her. I can see when she's trying to knock out my student. I can count her every single time. That's why the students are able to keep the women there and they can fucking pull in the same day late with the coaching. Hope that makes sense. And I know some of you are just getting offended these days. At me, John Elite. Some of you getting very offended just listening to me. And maybe it's like a restaurant that is just a little bit too harsh, like Gordon Ramsay. But I could tell you, this stuff works. Is is some people I just don't think they get me. They don't get me. I'm giving you the billionaire strategy here. The billionaire strategy. A lot of people's strategy is just a 10% number close. These white guys, these tall white guys. I'm giving you like the fucking same day life formula. And of course, like Jordan Belfort in sales, you have to qualify your clients. But how to choose the right girls you can same day life? That's another question. But that's for another time. That's for the inner circle. That's not for you guys. But anyways, now that's the end of the video. I want to say that August, not in the future, I have a deal for the Elite Playbook. 
Elite Playbooks my very first product. Twelve. It started with 12 videos because one student dropped out. And I had to make him a video product. And guess what happened? I sold him the video product. And you know what? That's the beginning of the playbook. And I included Skype on purpose so no one knows everything. The analogy is like um, Jesus in the Bible. The elite playbook is the Bible. But when you read it on the surface, you're like, oh, it looks like whatever Justin Wayne's game or it looks like what? No, you guys are idiots. There's so much depth to it. There was depth. And just like today, I give you a lot of depth that you don't understand yet. It's like I'm speaking in tongues or something. You guys don't understand. And even the tall white dating coaches, they'll dismiss it, even though it's superior to whatever you're teaching. So I'm going to keep preaching the gospel here of the game. You don't have to like me. Everyone hated Jesus. I'm not saying I'm like Jesus. And for some of my infields, it might look like I'm walking on water. But I'm telling you the fucking formula here. And I'm telling you, elite playbook is the defense of the game. It is the boxing defense. It's that simple. It is the defense of the game. By dealing with compliance, non-compliance, by having a good defense, you can get over the line faster. This is why the students become kind of more rejection proof. They have no idea how to get the girl all the way back home. But when, when they have nothing to all the reject you, that means the women are trying to knock out my students, but they just can't hit them. It's like Mayweather dodging by every punch is elite 30. The woman's like, Phew. you're just slipping by all the punches. Like, she's wondering, what the fuck? Why, why is nothing connecting? She's like, she hits here, you block here. She hits here, you block here. Go underneath it. Now she's trying to hit you in the head, you duck underneath it. And then you have, boom, you hit her back, counter punch, back to the jab, and back to the defense. Now you understand my game. This is why it's so unbeatable. Mayweather is unbeatable. Me and him, we think exactly the same. Kai Zen, when you look at Mayweather, he's always doing this pad work. You'll see him like he remembers like a billion combinations to work on his reflexes. That's what Kai Zen is. Kai Zen is a way of me practicing at home, my reflexes before I go out. So there are students taking Kai Zen right now, the course. And Kai Zen means one person improving all over time. But whenever a white dating coach tells you, John, or they say like it's compliance, non-compliance, and you just have to deal with it there. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. I'm sorry, but they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And then when you have so much fucking value up here, their values up here. So therefore they have more compliance. They deal with less objections up here. And they get over the line. Which product do you like better? Elite 30 or Elite Playbook? Me personally, I like Elite 30. Um, Playbook is awesome. Playbook is a very powerful course for the offense of the game and also the, the different tonalities in the stages of the game. But I like to think that that's great. That's like offense. Maybe sometimes a good defense is a good offense, but that's all it is. The playbook is so much on the offensive side, there's no defense. So which product came out first? The playbook came out first. Elite 30 was designed after the playbook. Because a lot of people do not understand social skills, how to do conversational skills, how to stand, how to make eye contact, how not, how to break eye contact, how to do like um, not giving validation. They didn't get it. So I kind of like thought, hey, if I design a course, right, they have a defense and they have an offense. Then they can calibrate. I'm just saying with the defensive side of the game, the social skills, I didn't realize how powerful it is. Social skills can overcome anything. Seriously, you could. Conversational skills, social skills. And this is the missing piece. And this is why when most people are boxing, right, they're not, they have no defense. And they're constantly trying right cross and trying uppercut touch, like RSD Tyler, and keep self-amusement. So it'd be like, like this. And they're getting punched in the face. Knocked out, knocked out, knocked out. In London day game, there's always like jab conversational skills, but it's all like all right crosses in the beginning. Boom, push pull, challenging, assumption stories. Self-amusement, teasing. Then now they switch a jab, jab, conversation. Comfort, 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 comfort. Knock the fuck out. If you're not knocked the fuck out by being a tall white guy, now the whole day it's all jab, like jab. Guess what? No flirting. There's no flirting, which is a hook. No, no hooks. Hooks reduce the 10-hour face time into like less and less and less. That's how I can same day lay in the video and like pull two girls home, same day lay in the bathroom in like less than 10 minutes. I can press the game because I know how to box and I know how to go through the stages. Um, can you, hard case and newbie can make, can, 
JP, can Grum hard case to newbie make you do nightstands? Instant plus, I mean. A polling is easy with uh, Elite 30. If you do all 30 days or something, the students around day 15 already got late most of the time. I don't know why. I never designed the course to get people late. I thought maybe by improving their social skills, I designed the course to get them more dates, okay? JP, I thought maybe they get a few more dates, they'll be happy. But what happened was once I released the course, how, how was uh, Elite 30 from Heart Case to Hero designed? Imagine something's called Asperger's syndrome, which is an autism, sort of high functioning autism. You can see that with high late counts guy with a fucking autistic face, you know, no facial expressions, monotone. That's Asperger's, narrow focus, socially awkward. So a lot of guys were like that. So I designed, I look at all the pieces of uh, Asperger's syndrome, okay? Lack of facial, all that stuff, lack of social skills. And I said, what is the opposite? So I thought, why not make 30 pieces of the game, like a 30-day challenge? Because I, I saw like a simple pickup do a 30-day challenge, right? Whatever, Pro simple, oh, some bullshit course. It doesn't even work. So I thought, if I made a 30-day challenge, right, I can teach people how to do social skills in 30 days. And a lot of people do get laid in less than day 15. And I was shocked. What was in the first 10 to 15 days out of getting them all laid? I don't know. I don't know, but it is, I have found 30 pieces of social skills. Eye contact, standing 45 degrees, hand gestures, facial expressions, of not giving validation, which, you know, Todd Valentine loves validation. Validation just sort of creates non-compliance. White people don't know about the game. But yeah, that's Elite 30. Elite 30 has created something I never intended, which is nonstop ways. That's why I like Elite 30 more. I hope that answers your question. Any more questions before I go? Maybe within an hour, I'll leave. <coughs> but is <coughs> Sorry. But... Hope that helps. Hope that helps. But yeah, for the people who are looking at this <coughs> fucking coughing a lot, compliance, non-compliance. It's not just smashing the brick wall and going around it or powering through it. It's more like trying, you know, counter punch, like boxing. A woman wants to knock you out. She has to commit to knocking you out. And that's non-compliance. And you can block it and you can hit her and get back to the jab and get the fuck out of there. To keep her on the line. Why hard case can't get a date? Well, you have to understand, right? Um, a lot of these people, if facial expressions is very important, that keeps the compliance, right? And also moving your hands and stop talking so you're more expressive. And also having a good body language and good posture. You have to ask yourself, MJ, what is the opposite? The opposite is like standing up to her, no facial expressions. Talking like this, right, monotone, and completely like this with no expression and making no eye contact like this, left and right. And when they talk like this, they look like a robot and they scare women. So when you see these white coaches doing the same shit, there's a lot of people who are borderline autistic, you know? There's a lot of guys who, who are called the PUA disease, right? The PUA disease is called comorbidity. So a lot of dating coaches have like, uh, sociopath, narcissism, Machiavelli manipulator. You always see the slang by Asperger's depression and ADD or attention deficit disorder. And a little bit of, um, just a bit of schizophrenia, a little bit of crazy mania kind of behavior. So when you combine all these mental illnesses together, right? That's what it makes a PUA disease, comorbidity. So for the guys who have higher value in the game, for example, the higher value, like I said. For them, all these delusional behaviors like sociopathy and all that stuff, because they're delusional, they believe that it is their game. It's not because of the higher value that makes it easier to get over the line of fuckability, like sales. They actually believe it is their game. So they're always in upward spiral. And for the guys with lower value or lower SMV, right, they're not going over the line all the time. They're going to start to perceive the game in a downward spiral. Does that make sense? Because they're both delusional because they're a sociopath. I'm not a sociopath. So, but they're, they, the ones who are, are very delusional and they always have to win at all costs. 
win at all costs. That means they always have to be right no matter what. They always believe they are right. And that's the thing. Their testimonials, the more delusional they are. And Charisma King is one of the most delusional I've ever seen in my life. Looks don't matter. Race don't matter. All this shit. You just got to be nice. And just, yeah, that sounds great, right? If you're a natural. But if you're not a natural, and I, trust me, I know a lot of naturals. Some of the best day gamers in the world have mentored me. Okay? Some of the very best. Like of the best of the best. I'm talking about guys who have like a fucking 96% of the girls coming on over. And I've seen it. Like 13 or 14 fucking ladies in this month. That's it's not like this mansion is very far from like malls and shit. It's a very residential mansion. Okay. It's not easy, but for them to have that much skill, they're way better because they also have the social skills. Elite 30, they have mastered. This is the social calibrations, but they also master the social skills. So that's why they can't get a date usually because they don't have any sort of emotional, they have emotional problems. What they're expressing to the women is that when they're teasing and stuff, they're like, oh, something's off about you. I don't know what it is, but maybe I'll tell you later. It looks like a psychopath telling the women that instead of saying, oh my God, something's off about you. I don't really know what's wrong with you. They don't tell you later. The tonality changes, but with Asperger's, it creates a non-compliance. So they get stuck in the wall. Now they don't have the defense. And the women, because the women are emotional. They don't feel that guy. They don't feel what he's saying. They don't understand. So therefore, she kind of like, when he texts her, she's like, eh, whatever. He's kind of socially weird. So women always look for something to reject you by. There's always one thing that they look for. Don't give them that. And when you master Elite 30, they'll always try to knock you out. Don't get me wrong. Women will try to knock you out every opportunity they can. But when she she's not knocking you out and she's getting hit, she's going to be on the line. Hope that makes sense. If that makes sense, give it a thumbs up. Because I don't think a lot of people understand me. Two thumbs up right now. You guys do not understand what I'm saying. That means Johnny Lee is like too, his game is too high. And, and what they're telling you out there, which is give a compliment. If you give a compliment, right? It's kind of like Tinder. Okay. Tinder. I don't know what Tinder is. I don't use Tinder myself, but it's kind of like you can swipe in two directions, right? You can go forward or backwards. So swipe right or swipe left. Am I right? So what you're doing is how you're cute. You always get swipe left if you have a lower value. So if your value is lower here, like this. You always be swipe left with a woman. This is the huge rejection rate. Because like I said, the dating coaches, they don't have any sort of social calibrations like here. This is why Elite 30 is so important or social skills. Elite 30 is more social calibrations, a physical calibration, conversational skill. So if, if they're missing this piece over here, right, social calibrations, this is why most dating coaches, right, they just think you got to vibe it. Because they have so much value up here that they're vibing it is like the jab, which is a stronger punch. Does that make sense? Because the jab is stronger. That's what they feel like. So you mean if you talk with a girl and do all these things, so you social, you touch and you flirt. I did today and I come out and sit next to me on my food together to her place, right? Then she rejects even she touching hands and keep going. Well, think about this way. If you can do all this stuff calibrated, I think the best way to understand your question is that you're, you're looking at the game from a very offensive point of view, okay? JP, you're, you're always looking at the game from touching, right? Flirting, teasing, touching, touching, moving, maneuvering, touching. Not, you're not so much focused on the conversational skills. It's almost like you don't have a good stance. You're facing her. You're still getting knocked out. You're still suffering loss in your life bar. Does that make sense? You're also not having a good stats. She can knock you out. Unless your value up here is super high, JP. Oh, okay. Then your jab can knock her out faster. Hope that makes sense. The defense of your game might not be as strong. Maybe you have offense because you have more value. Hope that makes sense. Uh, together to her place. Yeah, I hope that makes sense to you. I hope that really makes sense. So work on your defense and your offense will be better because now if you cannot get hit on a defense, right, you can Philly show and you can get by all that shit, all the punches. 
you always have compliance because even if she's trying to knock you out, but she's still there with you, you are still on the line. You're still on the line. Hope that makes sense. And then you, once you have a good defense, then you can launch a good counter attack, a counter offense. But if you don't have a good defense, you can get knocked out. I hope that makes sense. I'm glad you're touching. It's like the boxer, Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao always does punches with a little combination. I'm the Filipino bread. I'm Manny Pacquiao. You know, I, I do a lot of punches. I want to thank God for everything. I'm Manny Pacquiao, Filip uh, Filipino bread. But because he has this sort of like attack mentality, the speed and all that stuff. He got beaten by Mayweather. Mayweather was a better defense guy. Mayweather had elite 30, and he was a better counter puncher. Make sense? He was able to counter everything and hit him back. So Mayweather wins. I agree. I mean, I do something wrong. Absolutely. So if you don't have elite 30, you get it. You need to fix the defense. I'm sure you have good offense, but don't forget the defense. And if you're talking about compliance, non-compliance, it's not hitting a wall. It's more like, you know, you're putting up the walls for no reason. If you're just, if you do this and you face her all the time, and hi, you're cute, and she gives you positive reactions, so it's fixing your hair, guess what? doesn't matter. It just means she'll flake on you faster. You ever try to sell a product to somebody that doesn't want to be sold something? You want to sell them a product, and you're like, the guy, the guy says to you like this, oh, yeah, it's a great product. Sure, absolutely. Send me an email. But you never hear from them again. And you're wondering, why is that? I got a positive reaction. I got an indicator of interest. No, no, no. It's not the indicator of interest. It's indicators of compliance. So this is a mystery method that fucked a lot of people up. The mystery method has fucked a lot of people up. I know a lot of you like the mystery method. But because of this, indicators of interest has fucked you up, guys all up. You're always looking for that positive reaction, not the positive compliance. Hope that makes sense. And for no reason at all, when you don't have the social skills, you're putting up more walls that you have to knock through. And it's not just like the analogy of a car hitting a wall is bullshit. It's more like a boxer who's going to get a punch and she's going to drop the hand. You always get knocked out, but you can counter punch it. You can always, you know, block and hit, block and hit. I know that sounds very, very um, advanced level shit, right? And the hand just slipped by. It's kind of like a sky train. Like a train, just slip by. You punch back, punch back, back to jab. Keep the distance. Now you're back in the line. She wants to walk away, right cross, back and jab. Always jab, always natural conversation. Defense, good stance. Now she can't knock you out. She misses. This is how I'm doing the dating. And now you guys kind of realize that Johnny Lee, but you realize how does Johnny Lee be able to not get knocked out by the women? Is it the personality? Is it the tactics? It's a combination of everything. It's a combination of everything. The thing is that a lot of people is always thinking like ABCs are attraction. They're always thinking it's tactics. I'm using next tactic, next tactic. No, no, no. I mean, all of this is like a flow. All this Mayweather stuff is a personality. It's a, he's a counter puncher. It's a personality. It's a high value adaptive personality. And this is why my game, not everyone can do it with, like I do it. I can do it easily because I'm smarter than most of the population. And I'm not here to brag, but you guys know I'm fucking intelligent. You guys know I do have 400 testimonials. Most of you know that, like, compared to other, other coaches. The reason why other coaches don't like me right now is because everyone's trying to claim they are the best. They're the best coach, this, that. They don't have any fucking testimonials to prove it. You guys know it. You guys go to my page. I'll even write out here. Okay. John Elite.com. When you look at all the testimonials on the bottom, right? 400 of them. You wonder, what the fuck? It's not about theories. Everyone wants to be the best, but they always have one fucking problem. No matter who they think they are, it's always night game. Remember, night game. Compliance, non compliance. It's easier. Night game's easier. Night game does not require much social skills. You just got to filter, you just got emote. And you just got a little bit of game. That's only 50%. You're crossing this shit out. Maybe it's some decent body language. Day game, you need like all of them. Day game, you need all four. So day game, you need a lot more skill. You're missing the social skills, the upper area. 
this half is cut out. This upper half is cut out. So therefore, if you got the social skills, you can actually keep yourself from getting knocked out. If you guys think of it as a boxing analogy, okay? Now the game finally makes a lot of sense. Before the game may not make a lot of sense. What do you think about online game? Well, online game does not require obviously no social skills, no social calibrations. It just you just need to stand better. It might require a little bit of game, like text game. Does it make sense? And a little bit of motions because you need that motions in the picture. But that is not really a game that you want to brag about. Because when you look at online game, right? If you have a higher SMV, you get more swipe um, rights. Make sense? So it's a game of SMV. It's, it's always a game of value. Game is about delivering value. If for someone like me who has less value, for example, online before, I don't use Tinder, but I had a friend, right? Put my pictures on Tinder. And he also put other Asian dating coaches. They don't get much matches. I only got like two matches. Two 18-year-old girls who were like really like eight or 10, very pretty, but they didn't respond much afterwards. My friend wrote, he tested it. So my SMV is very low. My sexual market value is not that high. So online game is more like, uh, it's very racist. Compliance, not compliance. Online game is extremely racist towards two races. If we look at the stats to see if race matters or not, who are the two bottom ones? Who are on the bottom of the fucking ladder? Number one is black women. If you look at all OKCupid stats or Tinder, black women are dead fucking last. Number two, who's the dead last? Asian men. These two are the races that are being swiped left. Of course, you might say, John, you might have a politically incorrect thing like Asians can do this. No, actually, Asians, if you look at what women gravitate towards, Asian men are really dead last. So if you don't try to fill it in the other categories like social skills or do approaches, you're fucked. If you aren't trying to do some kind of lifestyle game, work on your social skills, making friends, and having a cool Instagram, for example, you are so fucking fucked as an Asian man, especially in Vancouver. If you were in Toronto or California, sure, you can get some matches because there are Asian guys and white girls. But in Vancouver, I only see that once a month. So I hope that answers your question. Online dating is extremely racist, and you need a, a lot of lifestyle, a lot of pre-selection to bypass that kind of shit or be very good looking in value. And I'm not even good enough looking for online dating. At my short height and at my lack of muscles is not enough. That's why I stick to day game because I get to control the boxing match. That makes sense. I get very random results. Many girls have boyfriends like you. I have a boyfriend, like you mentioned, some random results, but the girl's instantly talking to you, so they want to go for it, but it's rare, so I think they're not a game in my case. Uh, so you recommend, I recommend you get uh, Elite 30 from Heart Taste to Hero. That is your product. You do the 30 day challenge, instead of saying, that sounds easy, I know this, I know this. You know what? If you did the 30 day challenge, you'll probably get laid with like, because you have some game, it sounds like. I'm not sure if English is a problem, but you seem to have some game. You have seen a lot of products, but you got to look at the social skills, right? How do your parents meet each other? How do your grandparents meet each other? Is it because they read a book on a game? Absolutely not. It's because of social skills, social calibrations. They just said hi. They were social. These days, people are less and less social. It's more like social media. Social media. Hope that makes sense. So it has changed a lot. Elite 30 is something that you should get. So just go to my site, go elite30.com, fill in the form. Only $160. But why did I not charge like, I don't know, $300 or $400 for the course? I figure people with heart cases couldn't even get a job. Uh, they couldn't even keep a job. Most of the heart cases, they cannot keep a job. And they barely make money. They dress like shit. I could tell when the person's heart case. They make a lot of excuses. They dress like shit. They don't have many friends. They're socially uncalibrated. They don't know how to talk to women. They get flaked on a lot. They have like the high functioning autism sort of Asperger's. Not all of them have it, but that's the thing though. Hard cases are like, they're missing a few pieces. And I remember I had a student who was 17 years old before the boot camp. Okay. He just wanted to take a very short boot camp. He could not afford it. He was only 17. I kicked him out, by the way. I kick a lot of people. I don't like. 
he's already got laid. I made him do the 30 day challenge. By day 10, he's already got a blow job from an Asian woman who's an older woman. He's like 17. Not sure what's the deal on that. I'm sure it's legal. Okay, she's married. He changed his hair color to raise his SMV, his rights to look more white. After that, around day 18 or something, he's got a, he, he same day late, um, a really hot girl in his school. He claims she's the second hottest in his school. His school's full of ugly girls. So he got the second hottest one, and they're still in a relationship. And he was like, John, how come you didn't teach me that much about the game? I know it's before the boot camp. I was angry at you because you weren't teaching me. I said, I said, motherfucker, this is the game. This is the defense of the game. All this other shit from PUAs are all fucking scammy shit. It's all scammy shit. They're all autistic. This is why I got all the testimonials. Because of the social skills, social calibrations, emotional intelligence, which I'm not teaching you guys. That is none of my products. It's only in the boot camps. I know all this stuff. I know this whole formula. This is why, you know, you know, it's funny. When you compare me and I look at all these other dating coaches, like High Lady Counts Guy, I look at Todd Valentine, I look at JT Tren, I look at Squat Casanova, I look at all these people. And I think to myself, I, I am like Usain Bolt, you know, the fastest runner in the world. I'm looking and I'm competing against the Special Olympics. You, you guys all know it. You guys may not like me, but you guys know I am like Mayweather. I'm the shit talker. I'm the guy with the, all the testimonials. And, you, and when you guys see this boot camp clip, right, of the guy getting two same day legs and two poles in them, you'd be like, shit, I mean, there must be something to this. Yes, I, I figured out the whole game, every single piece of it. My mentor may be better than me, and he's the only one I know who's better than me. But this is about as close as you get. I'm sure he's just a, there must be one level up. 96% of the numbers of his come on over and bang. It's like, what the fuck? So there is one guy better than me. And he is the guy who taught me like four or five years ago. He met me one day. And I just want to say thank you to him. Because <coughs> we're going to sell this house very soon. So is Elite, are you saying Elite better playbook? No, I'm not saying it's better. I think they're both important. I'm just saying the defense is just as important as the offense. Okay, J.O., the defense is just as important as the offense. And I know who you are. <coughs> I know who you are. I know you got so much results. But you do have to remember the comments, open-ended questions that you practice in the mirror over and over. Okay, J.O., that was from the Elite 30, wasn't it? But also the flirting that you have done to close the deal was from that playbook. It took both products, but you got the bundle. It took, or I mean, eventually got bundled. It, it took both products to have a defense and offense. And this is how you can break through the compliance. It's not because you're a high value, like white guy, like here, high, high value, line of fuck ability is getting over it easily. You are, a, you know, like a tall black dude. But the point is this. It made it easier for you to get over that line by having a perfect defense. And what I was explaining earlier is like Mayweather. The defense is the Philly shell defense where you cannot be hit. No matter what, the people just can't hit you. You can block everything. You slip by all the punches. Get underneath it. They try to hit you, right? And then when she tries to hit you, every time a woman tries to all reject you, she's going to drop this hand down. So you can block, boom, hit her in the face. This is where, like, I'm talking about. Jab is mostly the conversational skills you are practicing. I remember in front of the mirror, you kept practicing comments, open-ended questions. Comments, open-ended questions. You know, you beat 30. So you were practicing this punch. Good job. Right? That's all you practice. But then you start getting, you start hitting harder, am I right? But then it wasn't enough. But then I taught you another punch. Instead of the teasing, you didn't use teasing. You're a tall black guy. I taught you how to hook. I taught you how to hook. So now you're doing this. <clears throat> right? That's what I taught you. And you knock her the fuck out. That's when you got your laid. You want to get laid before you join the army. Okay? You want to get laid. And guess what happened? You got laid. And you kept getting laid. 
over and over. And improve your fashion, right? It's like improving your fucking muscles for the boxing. That's, the, that's what it is. And you've by following my advice, right? I am right. So it's the defense and offense to overcome the compliance issues. Compliance, not compliance. And the problem with white dating coaches when they only focus on the game and they're not focusing on the social skills, it really pisses me off. Because now we got these goddamn autistic Asian men who are going to game higher. Cute. I'm gonna come by and say hi. Oh wow. Oh cool. Oh nice. Oh wow. Oh, you like ballet? I like ballet. Oh, so what do you do for fun? What do you do for? Uh, uh, oh, okay. Can I get your number like a beggar? Huh? There is no defense. There is no offense. There's no defense. There is no offense. It's why Asian men all fail. And you see the dating coaches. All of them. Squat and cast. No, uh, generalized style. Same shape. Just fucking face her. No social calibrations. Puts a lot of pressure on her. Great number of close videos. My videos, all same delays, same delays, same delays, same delays, same delays. All of them. You have no idea, like, how many is it? I posted four. Go, go watch the videos again and see how I keep them on the line. You'd be like, now that you watch the same video again, you'd be like, shit, John's actually secretly keeping her in the boxing match. The rest is easy. Once you, once you beat her down like Rihanna, like Chris Brown and Rihanna, the rest of the social comfort and the rest is easier. But first, she has to submit. It's not a numbers game. It's a game of compliance. It's a game of boxing. It's a game of defense and a game of offense. That's how you can smash. It's not, it's not a game of smashing the walls like, you know, high leg counts, tranny fucker says. It's not like that. It's actually not. You can knock out this wall. It is not a fucking wall. It is a woman trying to knock you out. You guys are equal. It's not like she's a fucking stop in your car. And No, it's more like she's trying to knock you out and you're trying to counter Back on the line. That's how it is. That's the right analogy. It's boxing. It's boxing. And you guys don't know the secret tactics my mentors taught me, which is called the cunt punch. It's like the low blows over and over again. He, he teaches me how to like punch the nuts like 50 times. And there's no rules. He taught me all these secret techniques that are not taught to the public. Because I met my mentor so many years ago. He's taught me about the blazers. He's taught me about the watches. He taught me about the shoes many years ago. He taught me about the hair. He taught me about all this stuff. And now he's teaching me the next generation, the next 100 years. I'm already 100 years ahead. Now I'm 200 years. The new stuff will trickle down slowly. The new technologies, when I feel tested, he's like the Terminator chip. This is why I've maintained over, like, control over the whole industry. We will sell the apartment soon. Not the apartment. This is, a, I mean, the mansion. Sorry. We'll, we'll sell the mansion. I'm an investor of it. So... We're gonna sell it very soon. When it's sold, whatever, it's fine. But I hope you enjoy it while the time I had it. But for me and him, I'm just telling you, we always have people in our lives that have helped us in our game. And not everyone's game is transferable, but his one may not always be transferable to me, but a 96% number close rate. And when high lead count guy says 10%, I don't know who to believe because I saw this with my own eyes. That means the social skills, the lifestyle, all these things are more important than just a goddamn PUA tactics. Most PUAs, right, are very much like an empty shell. They're an empty shell. They, they have no fucking life. They have no hobbies. They have nothing to do. And they go around approaching every single day like a sociopathic autistic Asperger's guy, like an RSD victim, like an RSD victim. They always like just being like Tyler, just grabbing her and touching her and acting sociopathic but confident. And when they're delusional, and they always believe like, oh, you know, if I believe this and I keep taking action, I'm gonna get this kind of results. But the more they go out there and the results are not matching their delusions up here, their mindset will start to go down with it over time. And they quit, almost all of them quit. And you wanna to say to them, you wanna shake their fucking head and say, listen, I know you fucking hate me, I'm Johnny Lee, I scared the shit out of you motherfuckers. Right? And I sound offensive because you have very high ego and low self-esteem, right? So you, you got triggered. You want to shake their fucking head sometimes and tell them, you stupid motherfuckers, stop going to like these high lake counts, dumb motherfuckers who have like fucking less than five testimonials for day game, maybe three. Stop being a fucking idiot, you fucking idiot, you fucking cunt. Right? Stop hating on me. 
You want to tell them this, but they don't fucking listen. And every time they always, they always go into the fucking wrong coaches like Todd Valentine. And it's like they can't even bash them. It's like John's the best dating coach in the whole fucking world. I can't even bash these dumb motherfuckers. John's running circles around, but John has like 300 and whatever like subscribers. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? It's like you guys don't even want to get laid. So, but John's not being positive. It's always like John, what the fuck? Grow up. Look at the fucking reality. Success leaves clues. Stupid angry women with their problems. I think with their bad past experience, getting approached. That happens a lot, yes. What the POA structure to follow after opening? Um, opening transitions, right? Also, um, attraction building, which can be self-amusement, push pose, teases. After that is social comfort. Social comfort is going to lead to forced qualifications. You got to get her asking questions. Once she asks questions, then you can start worrying about the instant dates or you can start to get the number close. Once you go for instant dates, then you go up the escalation ladder. Maneuvering, uh, objection feeling. I can't tell you the rest. Top secret. There's a new, uh, new escalation ladder. It depends. It depends what frame you're trying to face. For example, if you're like a boyfriend, like um, same day like guy, you'll be using a different escalation ladder versus the guy who's a boyfriend material versus a guy who's like um, like a friend zone orbiter versus a guy who's a husband material versus a guy who's a daddy daughter frame with her mental fucked up issues versus a high status celebrity status. So they all have a different escalation ladder. That means it, it depends on the amount of romance or sexuality. But my system, I don't teach romance that much in my boot camps. Justin Wayne was the romantic connection. So I saw it, call it the sexual connection. But like I'm saying, the game is not played in like, um, I think JT Trans says the game is like a game of logistics or something. Beginners talk about what to say or something like that, or intermediate talks about how to say it, and then advanced talk about logistics. But the experts, they think about the stages of the game. So a woman's stages of the brain. If you don't fucking Rihanna her, okay, John Smith, if you don't, re if you don't Rihanna her at the beginning, she's not going to submit. I hope that makes sense. So it's not like a value compliance, non-compliance. She will not submit. It's a game of submission. Once you can submit her, it can be more like a Tai Chi push hand. Does that make sense? It can be more of a softer thing. Back and forth. This is where the vibe can be built. But if you can't deal with this kind of things, you will not get there. So the woman's brain always flips. That means once in the beginning, she's always going to be the same shit. She's going to be bitchy. She's going to be like, wants to walk away. Then you have to break that it's not like a brick wall it's more like um keeping her on the line does that make sense just like in the beginning she's gonna want to walk away you can plow you can tease you can push pull but the tonality has to change oh god like you're walking away are you using bars if you don't hit her counter punch her like mayweather she will not be back on the line john smith Does oh, that make sense and then once she's on the line it goes forward but sometimes when it's too much forward, it gets very platonic. Does that make sense? It gets platonic. John, I like your name, by the way. Hope you're not like, you know, another John Smith. I just know. But having said that, I don't care. This is just the truth of the game. That's how it works. The problem is sometimes if it's too much jabs, it's platonic, right? Jab, 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 jab. You can become friend zone if you don't have like a high value here, right? And just align the fuckability. It's fading. Then when you do too many jabs, right? Because the jab is stronger than the Asian guy's right cross, a tall white guy who's six foot four. But if there's too many fucking jabs, right? Then the line sort of turns like bluish like this. It doesn't turn pink or like romantically, like a romantic sexual line. This is where you need to flirt. Does that make sense? So you, it's, it's a game of adaptation. It's not a game of uh, hitting a wall, compliance, not compliance. It's really a game of counter punching Mayweather. And like Mayweather says, like Mayweather may lose the first three rounds to a woman or may lose the first three rounds. No, he beat the show woman. But he may lose the first three rounds to his opponents, but he always adapts and he always takes away the best weapon of the women. For example, I know a lot of women these days, if you DHV and you sort of like give validation and you kind of, um, you accidentally try to tell a story that, looks like high value, but she doesn't believe you because you're Asian. So I keep that off of the line. That means like Mayweather, I adapt. I don't DHV, I don't do this. Save it for Instagram. That's how you get the compliance. So it's a game of compliance, non-compliance. 
It's more like a game of social skills, a game of lifestyle, a game of emotions. So it's social intelligence, emotional intelligence. The game is persuasion, but the problem with the dating coaches is all they focus on is persuasion, 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 persuasion. Keep it on the line. Trust me, I know everything about this Jordan Belfort stuff. I do, right? I understand the sales techniques, all that stuff. But it's the same with the game. It's a game of persuasion. Keep it on the line. Hope that makes sense. So yeah, that's that. I hope that answers the question. So <clears throat> that's that's what I uncover today. Compliance, not compliance. This is a very important topic. And sometimes not every one of us is born into a, like a high SMB. And when you look at the other day game coaches, how come they're so tall? How come they're taller than me? Why, why are all the coaches, right? ABCs of attraction, like six foot three, good looking guys. Why are there six foot two Asian guys with muscles? Why is it always like some tall Asian guy? What does that say about our race? What happens if you don't have that jab that's as powerful? You must throw all the punches. It's not just jabs, it's right cross at the right time. You can't just right cross the RSD or run in the game. You'll get knocked out. You gotta switch it up to even the hooks, right? Well, it's always jabs. Most of the time it's jabs because that's the conversational skills. Uppercuts, right? Uppercuts. Right? Uppercuts means like um, touch. Sometimes you got to touch a little bit. You got to touch. You got to vary it. So the problem is that when you do too much uppercuts, okay? Jonathan, if you do too much uppercuts, say a white guy who cannot emote, you cannot, they have no punching power, but they did a lot of uppercuts. It's kind of the same thing. Thank you, that's been covered the question asked before. What is an example of a good DHV story after opener? Um, all right, so DHV stories, is, I wouldn't use too much DHV because the mindset is I have to show off the learn. DHV should be only used when you have to get a number close, John Smith, okay? So if, if, you're, if you know it's not gonna go anywhere, you know how in the escalation ladder of Justin Wayne, for example, he has qualifications, you know? I like girls who are very, like, you know, artistic, are you artistic? Maybe those kind of things, but me personally, I don't use DHV stories at all in the day game because I know whenever I use it, she doesn't believe me. When the, the other day, I told a girl like I met another one just like her, right? And she's from you, like Ukraine or something, or Poland or other places. She she doesn't believe me. So using a DHV story when you have lower value, right? When you have a DHV story, when you're a lower value person, you try DHV. She thinks you're trying to go over the line so you get all the rejected okay john smith it really depends on your circumstance but if you want to do dhv stories properly there are some components that i would recommend for example if i want to say that she looks ukrainian and it kind of reminds me of other girls i obviously don't say where are you from ukraine i used to live there because that sounds like it's like you're trying to try show off to her so you gotta think if this is the showing off on this side right which is non-compliance but you don't want to show off on this side right you have to make it seem like you accidentally said it. Like you, you're not here to brag to her, just tell her a fact. You know, grew up in Ukraine. I saw a lot of the women who looks like you, but it really pissed me off sometimes because they always have the angry look in their face. She's like, what the fuck? It's like, you're not trying to show off to her, but it's kind of like indirectly bringing it up, okay? And sometimes I use DHV stories later on a, for the instant date, John Smith. I will use it more because like Jordan Belfort for sales. She has to like you, she has to trust you, and she's willing to be pulled home by you. There are stories that I can do in the very beginning from level one and level two, okay, John Smith, that can create the like. Because we all fit in the six frames, right? Some of us are husband material, some of us are boyfriend, girlfriend, some of us are fuck boys, same day like guys. The stories will match roughly um, what you're trying to accomplish. You find out what she wants and which frame that you're fighting from. So therefore, your stories can adapt to her. Like Mayweather says, you know, bring your best weapons to take away the best weapons from your opponents. In between that, you can tell stories that make her trust you more. I, you know, growing up, the girl exactly like you, but you know, very similar. One day I asked her out, yeah, we kind of made out a little bit. Eventually she became my girlfriend and we traveled the world together. You know, but she looked just like you. It's kind of weird. She, she says, I'm not usually her type, Asian man. But she was into this K-pop. It's just like you see the story is indirect. But it kind of is like a DHV. Now she says like, oh, another woman just like her. 
And there are other DHV stories you can make, like um, before you pull her back home. This other high lake house has something about um, pepper spray. You don't have to use pepper spray. You can say other things like, um, no, like, listen, if you don't believe me, right? Here's my ID. If I do anything you don't want, just bring it to the cops. Right? And you can tell a story how, like, another woman did that. Nothing happened. Nothing bad happened. You all had a good relationship. You became good friends or you became, like, you know, romantic afterwards. And most of them, they will not go to the cops. There's many things you can do. This is not the only way, John Smith. Just a hundred ways to attack, but the algorithm's the same. The DHV story should come after the instant date. Hope that makes sense. Now I'm in Ireland. I see every quote saying that place is not important, but girls here just hear your English with some accent and their mind, there's no way for you. I feel like that maybe it's better. They hear your English with some accent, then their minds. <clears throat> then this is where statements of empathy comes in. You can like um, acknowledge it. Because I used to have a steer in Prague. He was from Thailand. As soon as he says he's from Thailand, right? The women just run away. He pulled up, by the way. He pulled like um, a mother and daughter. I just fucked up. I shouldn't even like say this, but every single student in Europe pulled or got laid. And same with here when I came back so far. It's like a perfect streak. And nonstop for me, same day lays first approach. Nonstop. I have all in the infield Poland to all these other countries. Berlin, this, that. Don't worry, I got it. And the only reason why it's possible in the first approach is much easier in Europe. Husband material. They're communists. And keeping her on the line. So I get another student results. Got the woman to stay. Every time she wanted to move, you keep her on the line. Create compliance. I, I know a lot of the stuff I'm teaching you guys, right, are extremely manipulative. A little bit sadistic. But extremely, like, Machiavellian. I know that. I know that. I'm not going to apologize for that. The stuff I'm teaching you today, men deserve to have options in their life. Men deserve to have options. Women no longer have the right to tell men that you're not allowed to learn this, you're not allowed to do this. Compliance, non-compliance. It's not a wall. It's not a wall. I hope that makes sense. I know I'm telling you very advanced level stuff. But if you guys are not training under me, and me paying pinpointing exactly your mistakes on Skype or critiquing your infield. You're doing yourself a disservice. You guys don't have to like me. But in sales, they have to like you, they have to trust you and be willing to buy from your company. So what does the Johnny Lee company stand for now? What is the newest um, <coughs> mantra of Johnny Lee? Did somebody just text me? Okay, it's just a bunch of students. And... All right, I'm going to read to you something I have on my site, on johnnylee.com. Guys, check it out. Okay. So a lot of students are texting me. You see this line? So I have to talk about the company. What, what does it stand for? Okay. To the disgruntled ones. Getting burnt by every positive stereotype dating coach because they have to like your company to trust you and they have to be willing to buy from you. It's the same with women. They have to like you, trust you, and be willing to be pulled home by you. Here is to the disgruntled ones getting burnt by every other positive stereotype dating coach. Here's to the negative stereotype minorities, the short underdogs, the enlightened. Here's to the ones who sees the world differently. Here's to the ones who, okay, they are the ones who likes my inventions and innovations to get students getting laid. They are the ones who push the human race forward for a negative stereotype game. While some see us as the crazy outsider ones, I see enlightened day gamers because the people who are enlightened enough to believe that race height and muscles matter and you have to adapt with compensation theory. They can change the world with me. And my mission to help 1.5 billion Asian men raise their SMV and 500,000 minorities who are the ones that actually do. John Elite, a reluctant hero who never thought he would be a dating coach. 17 years in the game, but turns 
to the best day game coach in the world. Think outside the RSD mystery method. Simple pickup, Justin Wing, London day game box. That's what it is. Oh, my students testing. Listen, dude, I have to send you the playlist. I'm on the YouTube live, but you do have the elite playbook. I just have to send you the playlist. You're already enabled. So having said that, I got to go soon. I know you guys have a lot of questions. Just like, okay, so for that guy from Thailand who was in Prague or Czechoslovakia, Prague, 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 Prague. We see another fucking uh, infield from there. Actually, I got infield for every country except we got. Having said that, for Prague, he kept saying, um, whenever he's doing day game on the line, He's on the line, he's on the line, he's on the line. I'm from Thailand. I'm from Thailand. She's gone. She's off the line. Every single time. So what we did was that he lied about his race. He says he's Japanese. And then he's able to pull. But sometimes I like to call things out in Riga. It was so hard. But I got like an instant hangout that doesn't count as anything. Instant hangout means walking with him. I couldn't get even get an incident. I, the secret behind Riga, right? Is that nobody knows this? Even though the women are all six foot three in the buff, they're all Russians. I would say the majority of the people secretly are Russians. There, they have a low population. That means the women are absolutely beautiful. They look like runway models. All of them. You get used to it after a while. And the euro dollar is very expensive, so they have to be in a relationship in Riga. So I went in Riga, and one day I said, like, "Fuck it." I went up to the women. And I said, "This, listen. I know you guys." are all Russians, am I right? You guys have to be in a relationship because your Euro dollar is so fucking worthless, right? And I get it. You guys, if you're Russian, you're discriminated against. And one of them was like partially half Asian, like Mongolian Russian. <laughs> so she looks kind of a little bit Asian-ish. And the other one is like a blonde Russian. So beautiful, by the way. Then they finally like walk with me. But eventually I said something that fucked it up. But the point is, that when I learned from that, I called out, this is called calling out the elephant in the room concept. Calling out the elephant in the room. So in Vancouver, I'll be like, listen, I know in Vancouver, people are very antisocial here. Nobody likes to talk to each other. Where I'm from, I lie about it. I'm from Toronto. No, I'm not from Toronto, but let's just say, for example, just by calling it out, right? You can say it exactly, like, you're in Ireland, right? It's not important, but girls just hear your English with some accent in their minds. Like, no way. Just call it up. Hey, I know I have an English accent. It's annoying as fuck, but just continue. Bye, uh, blah, 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 and you can overcome it. If you don't call it up, it becomes what they call non-compliance. So you don't call it up, you're stuck here. Your line is going forward, you're stuck. Hope that makes sense. So there are ways. It's not about crashing the wall and getting around it. It's more like um, you're crashing the wall. And you're dealing with it. And by dealing with it, it doesn't mean slamming the gas and going through it. What it means by that is that you got to reestablish that, you know, calling out. So everything has a different tactic to go past it. Think about it as a boxing match. No longer like smashing a wall. Then you'll, you'll get through that compliance, not compliance. I hope that answers your question. So, JP, any more questions before I go? But yeah, that's how it was done. So. A lot of field testing has gone to this game. All over Europe, all over the yeah, fucking everywhere. So game changes every three months. That's why I come back and re-field test all that shit. Every year I go through like every step and I recalibrate. And I get to remove pieces of the game. Before I remove HVing, I'm gonna remove it again. So I'm gonna add Instagram. Instagram could be your DHV now to create compliance because when you tell me, tell her that you know I've been all over Europe and I you know met a lot of women or dated and banged a lot of women. I don't want to say banged in front of women. They they don't believe it because they're just thinking fucking Chinese guy, right? Yeah, right. But if you have in the pictures, right? I'm not saying you should put like new new pictures or shit. You get in a lot of trouble. But what I'm saying is that um, when you have the evidence to support it, now the women are like shit. Now she can't deny it. So Instagram closing with a cool lifestyle makes a lot more fucking sense. Hope that answers your question. Uh, thanks again. Is it more? It is more clear now. Absolutely. Just call it out. Once you call, once you call it out, 
the elephant in the room, right? Then it's no longer a fucking elephant in the room. <laughs> it's no longer just like that big fucking thing that's in the room. It's that simple. It's that simple. Game does not have to be complicated. I know that I have an English accent, but I come over here in this country, in Ireland, and a lot of you Irish people, you know, kind of judge me. Are you like the dark Irish? Or are you like the Conan O'Brien sort of redhead Irish with the big freckles and everything? So there's many things you can say because I am the English English. You know, it's easy peasy, you know, a little bit cheesy. You wanker, right? You're like, oh, sixes and sevens. A fucking bunch of wankers, like tosses. Excuse me, I want to come by and say hi because I thought you looked kind of nice. I want to come by and say hello. I know it's random as hell. And when I speak to you, uh, the reason I'm walking by, because I saw you like that, I'm going to talk to that bird. And now I'm going to self-amuse. I'm making a lot of jokes right now. And I like, you know, what you're having, whatever, but your boots do not really match. Now I disagree with you. That's just right cross, right cross, right cross, right cross, right cross, jab, jab, jab. It doesn't work. London day game does not work unless you do high volume. So, yeah. I mean, you can explain everyone's day game system and why it's failing. Why does Justin Wayne's system not work? You need the old stuff. Too much uppercuts. Touch, 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 flirt, touch, flirt, touch. Boom, boom. Knocked out. Short Asian guy. You look at highly count system. Keep uppercut, keep touching. Validation. Sticking your head up. Boom. You know? I'm going to frame. Right? You know, a hook, a little flirt here. One flirt, one right cross. Rest is conversations. No, it uppercuts. No, no. Adapt. Adapt. Keep her on the line. That's not keeping them on the line. And if you're not a tall guy with a lot of value, that's not how you do it. And you look at other day game coaches. Hi, I thought you are cute. Big haymaker. It's all jabs, no. Naturally. Number close, but the woman already walked away or knocked them out. So high, that's why a lot of dating coaches do a lot of number closing shit. They don't get that much compliance. That's why they have a 10% closing rate. Yet my mentor has a 96% of them coming out. I've seen it all. I was like, what the fuck? I thought, what kind of sorcery is this? And this is why I started getting really angry at all the other dating coaches because I feel tested all their systems. Every concept, I secretly feel that I'm pissed off. They teach you stuff that does not have social calibrations and social skills. It's really disgusting. I don't know what to say. I just say, I'm, sometimes I'm sick to my stomach. I want this industry destroyed. So did you try Lithuania? There's a lot of beautiful girls. Hey, uh, KT, greeting from Toronto. Yo, what's up, man? Toronto is a very good place for Asian men and white women. My cousin's from there. So, my cousin was also a dating coach, not anymore. But in case he's there, I'm going to say hi. <laughs> ET time. All right, cool. So, having said that, um, Lithuania, no, I didn't try Lithuania, but my student did. He got laid. One of my students got laid a lot. Uh, good looking Asian guy, five foot seven, all over Europe. <coughs> You'll see a testimonial of him soon. I, I was in Poland. In Warsaw, Poland, when I met him, I saw another dating coach there who was mouthing me off. Who once called me like a slanty eyed, you know, he didn't call me a chink, but he called me slanty wing. <laughs> what the fuck? That's fucking like, it's funny. It's funny. But then I kept calling him a faggot when I was there. I called him a faggot like 30 times in a row in front of his fans too. Look at this faggot sucking him off. Look at this faggot. He didn't, he didn't fight back. He didn't do anything. He just sort of bow down and he's, these guys are pussies. But he's much bigger than I expected. But having said that, I'm going to say who it is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But when I was in Poland, that's when I saw my student. He was in Lithuania. And yeah, he got laid there. He got laid with a lot of hot women. So usually like the skinnier European kind of type that likes him. But he's more handsome than I am. That means he has a better face than he's more attractive. The, the women will have more of a dopamine release when they see them, so they have more compliance. But he had to do a huge amount of uh, approaches, unlike me, right? 
In Poland, I only closed once on my first approach. I had to infill. Very first one. I was thinking to myself when I was there. Oh, fuck. You know? We're so like, far away. This is the wrong place. The fucking have to cross the street to get to the mall. To get... There's no way. But I was sleep talking. And I was talking about the game. That's how, that's how much like, I can think about it. I was actually looking at Google Maps and thinking about how is this done. And I was talking in my sleep about the game. I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Go across the street this way and then do this. And that's, I, even, I can even teach students when I'm like sleeping, my eyes are like moving. Sometimes when I'm so tired, I teach them like for like 11 hours in a row. They still ask me questions and they still write it down. My brain is like a game processing machine with field testing, right? I was born to do this. So I heard South Asian guys run through women in Poland. Uh, in Poland, they actually do pretty well. So when we talk about South Asians, you're talking about Filipinos. It's Filipinos. So uh, what do I think about Filipino students? My best students are usually Filipinos. My best students who are Asians are always Filipinos because they're sociopathic as fuck. They have no sort of empathy. But that's what's good about them because they're more aggressive than the Chinese. The Chinese are timid. They have a, oh, Pakistanis in Poland. I didn't see that many in Poland, to be honest, when I was there. I didn't see that many. So Western South Asians from UK, Canada. Oh, I see. Well, I do want to talk about this topic right now. Uh, you know, Indian or brown men, <coughs> Pakistanis. The more whitewashed you are, right? You guys have bone structure. You guys are tall. You guys are bulky. You guys can look like you have a Western bone structure. So what I'm saying is that you guys are the new blacks. The new blacks. What I mean by that is that your stock market has gone up. Asian women's stock has gone up. Black people's stock has gone down just a little bit. White people's stock is always through the roof. It's like a stock market. White people is always highest SMV right now, right? In the stock market. Asian women, you know, is number two or number one now. And then look at Asian men, the stock has gone down. In Toronto, it's gone up. In other countries, it's gone down, right? But now the brown is a new black. That means you guys are on the way up. You'll find that by being brown, white women start to like you because you're more whitewashed. You're in the middle. You're not high. You're not low anymore. But if you're kind of like coconut oil left to right Indian hair, it's down there. But if you're whitewashed and you don't look that Indian, your stock is in the middle, but it has gone up. You are the new blacks. You are the new blacks. Indians are the new blacks, and this is the truth. Nobody wants to hear it, but I'm just telling you, it's not that bad to be Indian now. So why did black guys gone down? BB still still killing. Oh, wow. Well, the thing is that um, it's not that they have gone down. It's just more they slightly turned down a little bit. Just slightly. The thing with black people is that my students who, who are usually tall and black, right, they get nonstop compliance. Not stop compliance because they're what they call pre-selected. So it's like a boxer analogy. They have the muscles behind it. If you guys are getting this, give it a thumbs up. Okay, give it a thumbs up. So for the black students, they have all the qualities for evolutionary psychology. Not to be offensive, but they're not exactly good looking for the face. You guys don't admit that. It's like, okay, I admit that. John's right. I, I, I get it. I get it. It's not the face that no that women go for. It is the muscles. The height and the long fucking dick. The elephant dick. <laughs> they want to be split apart in half. And it's usually like a thicker white woman or white women. They're into black guys. And most of these women that are into black guys or other races, there are some women who don't like their own race. They don't go for white people all the time. They only go for it occasionally, but they're usually into dating men of other races and banging them. Because sometimes women, if you look at Europe, they're all like a tribe. They're all in the same race. There, there's always that woman that lets you venture outside the tribe. And I believe in evolutionary psychology. Whenever you have those women who are willing to go out to the tribe and get mixed, this is how it happens. Maybe this is a way for them to get out of the tribe. Hope that makes sense. I don't see that many thumbs up. I don't think you guys appreciate this. So they're not going down. It's just more like a stereotype. It's like they already had their wave of rap music and athletes throughout the year 2000, the 90s to now. But now it's just it's tapering off a little bit. It's just tapering off. But Indians have definitely gone up. I'm just telling you, everywhere. And Indian men usually like Chinese women. Because Chinese women have a bit of a tan in their skin and they could not get the white guys, right? 
so they cannot get the um, white guys. So black has peaked, absolutely. So they could not get the white guys. So it, like Chinese women or Filipinas, they'll go for any other race, like Pakistanis, Indians, um, Latinos, black, every other race except Asian men. Because it's called hypergamy. Hypergamy equals compliance. I'll say this again. Hypergamy equals compliance. And you're just like, fuck, what do you mean hypergamy equals compliance? So if we have this chart of compliance, non-compliance, being Asian, right, in Vancouver, and when you're short, it's a death sentence. It's always non-compliance. So, so I designed my game, like Mayweather, to overcome this. So I don't even care if she thinks she's like fucking 8.5 or 10 or 8 or 7.5. I don't give a fuck. I would take away like Mayweather, her best weapons. If her best weapons is basically like, oh, a DHV, I'll reject, I'll take that away. I'll DHV through the Instagram. Or I'll do it through her personality. I'll take away her best weapons. Hope that makes sense. I know how to adapt. Sure, it's harder. But compliance, if you're a tall white guy, right? You're compliant. This, this wall, it's not a wall. It's like she's trying to knock you off. This might not come up very often. If it comes up, after a few knockdowns of her, she will not stand back up. She's already submitted. Hope that makes sense. I know this doesn't sound politically correct, but certain races will have more compliance. Even if you're Indian and you look black, you will have more compliance as if you are black. If you are Indian and you look like a Latino, like my old roommate, you'll be treated like a Latino because his girlfriend's Latina. You, like my Latino student, who I told him to dye his hair brown like me, now he's treated like a white person or a mixed. Whatever you look like is what makes you have the SMV, the compliance. So for example, if I'm dressed like a white guy, right? And you see the way I dress like a white person, I get treated like a white person. I know that sounds pretty fucked, but this is how it is. White privilege does exist in the game. White compliance exists. And this is why white dating coaches have no testimonials because the compliance and non-compliance that they get from their SMV is not transferable to a shorter Asian guy. So when they try to teach you the game, they don't have to deal with as much resistance. They're way over the line. So that's is why John Lee has all the testimonials in the whole industry combined. Japanese boyfriend. Okay, so what do we do with a girl? Like I, if I approach a Filipina girl someday, talks, gives Facebook, then I do chatting with her. And she talks about having a boyfriend and not interested. The next day she gets a message from her Japanese boyfriend. It's strange because she says she had a boyfriend. I'm not trying to get her. <coughs> maybe she just doesn't see the value in you. She maybe just wanted, <coughs> like, your intentions were not clear. Maybe because you don't know how to flirt, you don't know how to set the frame. Your tonality sounds very monotone. This is why you need elite third. You sound so monotone, you don't change the tone. So her intentions is that you make a friend with her. When, when you're friends with her and you're on Facebook, that's great. But when you start trying to escalate or you try to, you know, flirt a little bit, then her boyfriend comes along. Now he's wondering, what the fuck is this guy doing? Is he trying to hit on my girlfriend? So yeah, there are issues with your game in terms of the expression. The tonality is not, like, it's just too much. And some of those women like to have friends as orbiters. So she may have 12 guys she can choose from in the social circle. But if you are a short Asian guy, for example, she'll always choose the tallest guy in the group all the time, every single time. Whoever is the tallest guy in her group, she'll choose the other 11 or just discard. Uh, it's strange, as you said. Yeah, exactly. So whatever. I mean, sometimes Asian women like that are socially retarded. It's how it is. It's how it is. And that's what men like. Women don't like that Asian men are socially retarded, but they love it when... Uh, I'm more of, of a, a game analyst in a way. Women do ch the choosing. It seems like it's all about LMS. Okay, let me, Women have free um, free to like picky, and they have a preference. Things like height, dick size. Um, capital T, you're 100% right. So, so everything is... I'm not going to lie to you, okay? I'm the only dating coach telling the truth. That's looks. Money, status, plus game. And like I said, game has four categories. Social skills, social calibrations, emotional intelligence, and um, persuasion, right? Okay. So you got to imagine this is out of 10, okay? Money is out of five. Because if it's all about money, all Asian men will bang white women. 
Uh, S is for status. So a natural status could be race. So if you're white, you rate it 10 out of 10. So it's out of 10. And if you're an Asian guy, it's the one out of 10, you can still raise it with a lifestyle. Does that make sense? Like you're a club promoter or you a DJ, that kind of shit. I heard that before. And then, um, I don't know, white people, it's not fair, but they can go any country and get their dicks out. And game, right? It's out of 10. But where does the 10 come from? So 10, 20, 35, okay? JP, 35. You need to be 20 out of 35. So if you're lacking in the race department, you have to start to improve the looks. Do you see my hairstyle? Because I'm not having that foggy hairstyle, right? I'm improving the looks. It's a very accurate scale. You wonder where are the 400 testimonials come from? 20 or 35. Looks do matter. And if you're a certain race, if you're Indian who's whitewashed, guess what? Out of 10, you're only five or four. Does that make sense? It's a very accurate scale. And when you look at game, it's out of... You can break this down in 25, 25, 25, 25. Game might be all of this stuff, but social skill, social calibrations. So if you work on Elite 30, for example, okay, JP, social skill, social calibrations, you already got that 50%, that five out of 10 on the game. Does it make sense? But if you only focus on the persuasion, you're only focusing on 25%. So therefore your game is only like 2.5 out of 10, maybe, maybe three or four. So if you look at white dating coaches, right, their status is out of 10, okay? So if they already have 10 and they need to be 20, their looks is already 8 out of 10. How much game do they have? Two. Two. Do you, want, you wonder why white dating coaches have no testimonials? Accurate scale, isn't it? Because their game is like two. But if you're tall... You're strong, but you're not that good looking. Your looks are like 6.5 or something. You, they use seeking arrangements. Make sense? They either value seven, but they need to get over that line. So there'll be a DJ and they'll use seeking arrangements. And they'll try to cheat the game. They'll try to use a value, money, all that shit to cheat the game. So if you're not good looking, uh, white dating coaches are narcissistic and deluded. Yes, they're extremely narcissistic and they refuse to talk about that race matters. They're always saying that, oh, it looks, when they talk about looks, money, and status, right? They always say status. They always talk about class. Is it because uh, I'm not making much money in status or I'm not like the high status? And they always say it's a looks matter. Have you noticed that? White dating coaches. It's about the looks. Does looks matter? But it's always, they never talk about the race, right? They never talk about the fucking race, ever. They always want to avoid everything and they like to say in the very beginning, right? That compliance, non compliance. They like to say, oh, race only matters in the very beginning part of the game and after that your race doesn't matter that's bullshit because compliance not compliance it's about value right this is your value remember that line of fuckability if you're high in the race you're white it's higher 20 or 35 this is the secret if you guys get it give a thumbs up i'm telling you some real shit here this stuff the whole industry does not want me to tell you the only dating coach in the world is Okay, you have to understand why in the world does Johnny Elite right tell you all this stuff? Won't Johnny Elite lose a lot of money? How, and second question is, how come all the white dating coaches or all your favorite dating coaches, how come they're all trying to comfort you? They're all trying to suck up to you. And they're all trying to um, tell you that race doesn't matter. It looks don't matter. Why are they doing that? Is there an agenda? Yes, because when money is involved, they'll lie to you. I'm around naturals, okay? I have been around some of the best PUAs in the world. And they're not PUAs, they're naturals. They have good social skills. They have a good lifestyle. They have good um, body language. They have good vibes, emotional intelligence. They're, they don't know that you can make money being a dating coach. They're like, John, you can really make money from doing this job. Okay? They're like, John, you can. Uh, what I think about evolutionary daily, you mean Aaron Wayne? In Viking lifestyle. First of all, I think Viking lifestyle is a fucking cock fag. Um, no fucking infields, no proof, nothing. Just talking about his ass, there's another tall guy who's just vibing it. The vibing, you know, Negro guy. Okay? Vibing Negro who looks like a faggot. Um, to me, I see nothing impressive about this game. I Where, where the fuck are his pull infields or lane fields? There is none. Um... Not impressed. Not impressed. 
Aaron Wayne, right? That's why I call him, because he used to be trained by Justin Wayne. First of all, Aaron Wayne, my mentor likes him because uh, he li likes how fun he is. I think he's not the greatest PUA, but he, I can respect his hustle. He does a lot of approaches, okay? And they don't always convert. And he's a tall white guy, that's true. But his game is not perfect. He's a little bit chill. But I do like his hustle. Aaron, before in the past, right, you tried to add me on Facebook. You tried to, like, um, be friends with me. And I was an asshole. I just ignored you as John Wayne. I'm sorry. I didn't want to say I'm sorry. I'm not saying you're the best PUA, but I, I respect your hustle. You went out there and you did it all the time. And you've gotten better. I'm just saying what I see out there now, it's a lot better than you in the past. I'm not saying you're great, but I think um, it is much better than I've seen you before. And I'm sorry if I ignored you all this time. Okay? Look, listen, Justin and Wayne, whatever, and us, we are not, like, we're opposite companies at the time. But at least you're trying. I like the hustle. I'm just saying the hustle is awesome. My mentor said to say to Aaron one day that, hey, what's up? Sorry about whatever. I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm sure he's an okay PUA and he's a tall white guy. But the hustle, you got to respect it, that he's trying every day. Viking lifestyle, why would he call himself the best coach or whatever? I mean, seriously, here's, here's me, 400 fucking testimonials. My infield. You guys see this shit, like fucking Cindy Lane, a six foot two woman, six foot one. Who the fuck, I mean, can do this kind of shit? The fucking bang a woman in like 10 minutes in the bathroom, like two of them, two. Like pull two, bang one. Who the fuck can do shit like this? In front of boot camp students, too. And on top of that, fucking two girls, right? Who's quite young, quite pretty, extremely hot. Bang them in front of students, one. Leaving the students like dry, that nothing happened for him. But for me, it did. Who the fuck can do that? I'm just saying, I'm not impressed. Who the fuck do you guys think you are? Especially the high lake outside talking like, you know, okay, I don't care if he doesn't like me, but you, this is just the beginning of what you guys are seeing in my game. What if I told you that this, these infields are insignificant to what you will see in the future? And what if I told you there's so many infields, when I say it's a drop in the bucket, what, what if I post all the infields? You guys will start to say, that's impossible. John, what the fuck? You start seeing every bootcamp clip in the future when I post it. You will see every student getting pulled or laid. Seriously. 97%. The sexual connection. Why is not everyone trained under me? Because they hate me? You, you literally see it. I just posted another boot camp clip. You guys have seen it, right? Because they see it and they think like, you are older, man. Do you think that bowling is bad for a game? Because I think saving money for hair transplant because I bowled it. Um, you can always put a hand on it. But I'll, if you're bowling a little bit, I will shave it all off if it's really bad. Um, I will fade the sides. I'll fade the sides. But yeah, hair transplant is good. And or just cover it with a with a hat. But the point is this. Hair is important, but you can always work out and just shave off the hair. If it's really balding and it's looking the crown is really bad, it's Norwood and Valley, just shave it all off, dude. Get a fucking tattoo or something and bulk up. Be a positive stereotype in that way. Be a bad boy. Be that kind of Vin Diesel. <coughs> Vin Diesel. Tattoo is just that. So it's not game over. It's just harder. But it's not impossible. As long as it's not about, <coughs> it's all about positive stereotypes. The game. Archetypes. For example, before it was much easier when K-pop was a big thing. So for me being a pretty boy type of person, it's easier. But now people are forgetting about K-pop. So <laughs> now it's getting like, you know, I, once again, 90 Instagram to DHP. But people are forgetting about K-pop. But for you, whatever race you are, try to find a way to get into a positive stereotype. It's all about pre-selection, pre-selection. How can you be a pre-selected positive stereotype? Maybe increase the protector status. Hope that makes sense. So it is worth, um, they just see it and they think you're older, yeah. It's unfortunate when people see my white hairs on the side, right? Maybe you can't see it too well, but see that? They do think you're older. People judge. People judge. They're always looking for that one reason to all reject you. You can be confident and you can have a good personality. You can be dominant as shit, right? High value personality. It's not game over. But I would say shave all off. 
bulk up, get some tattoos, and just fucking go for the same DLA player kind of sorry frame. I don't know what race you are, but adapt compensation theory. Remember, it's about twenty out of thirty-five. Where can you put the um, value? And maybe you need to work on your your <coughs> status. Maybe you guys start building your lifestyle and trying to put it on Instagram to compensate for what you lack. So look at micro sculpt pigmentation, head shape matters, and skin tone. Absolutely. Um, micro pigmentation could be a way to help too. Absolutely. So do you do one on one consultation regarding non game career entrepreneur health max? Oh, absolutely. <coughs> Go to the Skype section. All right. You can talk about whatever. It's $200 for one hour of my time. So for. The people out there for next month, <coughs> I'm not going to offer the playbook at a discount. I'm only doing it once. You got three Skypes. You got three Skypes, and you got a $75 discount. But it's only going to happen for August. After August, I will not have another sale for anything in my whole fucking year. So whoever is stupid enough to not take that program with three Skypes, guess what? Fuck you. You want to ignore me? Like, I can't help you if I can't sell to you. That's all I'm saying. I can't help you if I can't sell to you. If I can sell to you, then I can help you. So, let's see. Yeah, I do do one on one consultation on Skype. So, that happens all the time. I get a lot of Skype students. So, another student just got, like, you know, Skype and shit. Okay, um, so one of my other students is asking me for free advice. I, I don't really respect people who keep asking me for free advice. I'm not gonna send it. Do it through Skype because I don't want to put a fucking band-aid and just give you free advice here because I should be working with you one-on-one -on -one to overcome this. I just put yes. You know, he's asking me if you should build friends. Yeah, it's annoying when people keep asking for free advice. It's like, fucking respect my time. Uh, I'll be interested in a bit. Absolutely. Ask, and also like the inner circle, right? I have a course called Inner Circle. We talk a lot about different concepts. Because these days, gaming is getting tougher. Because gaming is getting tougher. Having a good lifestyle, like living in a mansion, going to cool events and shit. I have discussed all this stuff. How high income skills, how to make more money, all that stuff. is in the Inner Circle course. But the inner circle course is a little bit more advanced level. The inner circle is only allowed for students who got laid or students who already polled and students who are big fans of me. That means most of you here, I wouldn't even let you in if you like beg. But it costs like 140 a year or $15 a month. And all the old videos are there. The inner circle is a secret course that's only my like most dedicated students are allowed to be there. And I just had a new student, he's already got laid. So five foot like three guy or something, or five foot, like that short, five foot two, five foot three. He's already got laid and um, lots of dates now. But he wants to get more results, so he joined. He just couldn't wait. But inner circle is not for everyone. If you try to join the inner circle, that's fine. But I have to interview you. I have to vet you like a fucking Muslim. No offense, but. Is there a technique when you talk with so many girls that you begin to open, talking, vibing, Them's getting boring sometimes, changing your state that gets you in and gets interested again. Uh, when they get bored of you, right? It's a good idea to write cross in the fucking face, right? My God, you have like ADD or something. Like, what's wrong with you? Can't even focus. They're like, what the fuck, right? Or you can self amuse. But the point is, you need to throw a strike to keep them on the line. Compliance, non compliance. When they're getting bored, they're getting off the line. Hope that answers your question. Don't keep them off the fucking line. Because if they get bored, they're gonna walk. And when they walk, they're off the line. And you have to do another fucking counter strike to keep them on the line. It's gonna be harder. I already know when they're gonna get off the line. I already know like right before it happens. So timing is very important in boxing too. Just like the game. Timing is very important. And the reason why I can switch so fast in inner coaching and no one else can do it. The reason why I got so many infields and shit is because. I'm smarter than the general population. I have 175 IQ. I'm fucking like, you probably know by now, most of you. I'm probably like some kind of 
genius or something. I have solved approach anxiety in like less than one hour. And I have it all recorded too. I figure out new techniques and stuff like, and also emotional intelligence, how to connect with people like this. I have cracked the code for people who don't feel any emotions. I have cracked every code. I'm, you probably know I'm smarter than most of the fucking psychologists out there. I know psychology. You know I can actually do all this stuff. Like you can see, especially with the perfect tonality, like I'm caring. And you know, like when I'm flirting, right? Like I speak like this. And a lot of stuff is not even taught to the general public. But you can feel it. You can feel it. I'm like teasing, right? Like, what the fuck? Like, what's wrong with you? Something's off about you. You can see I changed my states. See what I mean? But gaming is also not just about the technical words. Because the nonverbal communications make up like, I don't know, 65% or some shit. Tonality is like 30 or 25%. And the rest is like fucking 4% is the words. So if you think it's all words, no, it's not. Boxing is all about impact. You know, it's about impact. The power behind the punch. Right? And I remember when an Olympic boxer trained me, he says, John, you should push through the punch and transfer into the punching bag, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> and then when he said that, I hit 10 times harder. I was like, dude, you're a fucking genius. He's like, well, I'm an Olympic boxer. <laughs> so the game, if that's the power behind the game, you guys don't have the fucking power. And that's what they call the emotional fucking impact. If you don't have the emotional impact, this is why a lot of guys when they're flirting, the women are not getting submitted on the line they're not getting submitted so therefore you create a non-compliance so what was your job before they gave me a full time what was your job before they gave me full time oh you mean what was my job right i was my only job i ever done in my life was a dating coach i once worked in a coffee shop while i was a dating coach because one of my students says john Dating coach is not a real job. I've only ever had the job as a dating coach. That's the only job that I know how to do. I can't even do anything else, to be honest. I'm the best in the world at being a dating coach. But for everything else in the world, I have no idea how to do it. Like even like uh, one of my mentors, Dan Locke, a local guy of $70 million. He's on YouTube, by the way. He doesn't know how to change a light bulb. Seriously, he doesn't. He doesn't know how to mow the lawn. <laughs> but he's good at, you know, be an entrepreneur and teaching teaching people how. For me, I don't know how to do any other jobs in the world except be a day game coach. So yes, I've never actually had any other jobs besides being a coach for day game. And by and my God, when you look at all these guys like Spawn Casanova, you look at the fucking high lay counts, bullshit, bullshitter, self-proclaimed without any proof, it's just evidence and self-seeking arrangement shit that they put in the videos. And you know Johnny Lee can piss on all the other coaches in the face. You know that. JT Tran used to post his fucking videos of his students. And every single time I beat them in every single thing, now they don't even bother. You beat in the whole industry. You come in and you kick down the doors over and over and over. It's like John Elite is, the, is like the solution to the world. That the whole world, okay, the whole world knows that Johnny Lee is the best game coach in the world. Everyone knows. Not everyone likes me. Not everyone likes me. In fact, they hate the fact I'm so brutally honest. John, you're not allowed to talk like this. You have to be professionally correct, like, like politically correct, or you're going to offend people, like the, the Asians. What the fuck? I mean, fuck you. If I'm not like, if you like me, I must be not doing my fucking job properly. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> what was your job before? Yeah, that was my job. Hope that makes sense. And once you swear, you get offended. What the fuck? Are you? If you want results, you will come to me. That's all I'm saying. It's not about like liking me. Of course, you all trust me because the testimonials. I mean, what fucking choice do you have? You all may not like me, but the company, like I said, is for the underdogs, for the negative stereotypes. This is. I'm gonna talk more about the company. Like in sales, they have to like you, trust you. They have to like you. They have to like your company. They have to like your products. They like my products, they all use it. They like, you know, they trust me, but they don't like me. But I'm not here to be liked. And like I said, it's the only job I can do in the world. I, 
he asked me to do something else, and I don't want him to do it. Because I'm the best at it in the world. I'm the best at it. Show me one coach that has 400 testimonials. I'm more than every coach combined for day game. Not even one. Okay, who's in second place? There is no second place. Who's in third place? That's, I'm so far ahead. There's no third place. Who's in fourth place? No fourth place. Fifth place. Maybe there's a fifth place. Do you see that? Like you guys all know it. You, you all know John has the infields. John has all the fucking students' boot camp clips. Are you guys enjoying the boot camp clips? I, I don't even know how to edit them. I just fucking threw them together and just show you some shit. You'll see all the students pulling their game away. And you'll see me like John's yelling at the students. Well, now you can't blame me because you get to see me yelling at the students. John's making his students do push-ups and squats when you're not doing right. John's crazy. He's sadistic. No, you want the results. You have to pay the emotional price. You have to pay the emotional price. And some people are not willing to do that because people are scared. So it's about compliance, not compliance. I also do the same thing with students. When they're not complying, they get yelled at. When they're complying, they get rewarded. They get rewarded. Hope that makes sense. I got to get going soon. I got to get going soon. If you guys like it, give it a thumbs up. So far, it doesn't seem like a lot of people are giving a thumbs up, but I'm going to start packing up because this mansion, we have to clean it up and sell it. Going to sell it. And I make some money out of it. I'm an investor now. I'm not sure if that's a job, but you can add that dating coach slash investor. Maybe I invest in Nick's house too. So we'll see. We'll rebuild a house and we'll make a better one, a bigger and better one. Maybe in the same neighborhood. We'll build something better, better and better. And fucking, I don't know. But yeah, that's why I am. I'm a dating coach. The dating coach. You, anyone can hate on me, but the more they hate on me, the more they're going to see more stupid results. It's not going to stop. You guys are just looking at all the boot camp clips, and you're wondering, like, John, is this the only boot camp clip? No. I just never released them. There's a reason why I did not release all this stuff. I didn't, I didn't want it to be controlled or monopolized and taking credit for, like, my system as somebody else's system. No, this system was mine, the sexual connection. All that stuff they do is different than the other people. I've always had my own system. It's the same system I'm teaching. It's just since I'm like entrepreneur now, I finally can show you all the real concepts, including all the high income skills, all the stuff. Like it, it was always there. I just couldn't talk about it. I couldn't talk about it because people want to just make it seem like it's all about game. You know what I mean? I think um, it's really interesting to listen to you. Thanks. Yeah, uh, PP, right? Real estate is not always the greatest investment because it's a dangerous investment, okay? I'll tell you why real estate is an extremely dangerous investment. First of all, there's a lot of uh, taxes you have to pay, property taxes, maintenance fees and all that shit, mortgages. It is a death trap of money. But in Vancouver, the real estate right, can go up, so that's a good idea. But real estate by itself, you should, if you can get a 10% return, it's a, it's a good investment. So it depends on what we're talking about. Some places are better than others, like Texas and that. But when you're talking about investing here, so what I usually do is I um, I could knock down houses, rebuild them and flip them and then sell them and do the same thing over and over. Real estate is not a good investment. It's a death trap. But if you know what you're doing, you can get the good return on investment. It could be higher than 10%. In this place, it's going to be higher. So... It really depends. You can get a good investment, but investing mentality is very different. You have to like you have to know all these terms and shit. It's not it's not an easy thing. I would not recommend investing. You gotta think about it's like a high income skill. My high income skills, besides being a dating coach, is up here. Stan Locke talked about this. Okay, um, should coach outside of Canada, go to Asian, Latin America, and Europe. Yeah, China will probably crucify me and steal my organs. Latin America will probably kidnap me. The best method of earning money, could you comment on a bit? Sure. High income skills, for example, I, you see on my website, you all go to it. Do you know all the sales letters I've written? It? I didn't pay somebody thousands of dollars to write it. You know that? I've written it. Oh, Johnny Lee wrote it. So it's called copywriting. The second skill is public speaking. As you can see, I can speak in front of people. You know? I can speak in front of people. 
on front of the stage. That's important skill too. And also sales skills. So these are called high income skills. A high income job is kind of like you're a doctor or a dentist. If you move to a different country, that does not transfer over. Does that make sense? So that doesn't mean it's a good thing. A high income job, a high income skill is different. So that's number one. Number two is called scalability. Scaling means that you're taking a restaurant and making two or more houses or you're putting more ads into your marketing. So scaling means like scaling up. That means if you have to optimize, you make $10,000 a month from high income skills, then you can start to scale it. This will go up to 50,000, 100,000. And number three is investments. If you can make 10% on your investments, then you're golden. It's not my concept, it's Dan Locks, but it's true. So you got to know where you are. Investor is not the first thing you should do without having a high income skill. You can't scale it without a good optimize. Um, there are still problems lately because I'm not getting as many subscribers. So I have to build on the attracting the audience. You have to attract them first, you got to retain them, build a relationship, optimize. And then you got to systemize. And then, you know what I mean? I haven't systemized. I didn't buy click funnels that can do all the stuff with the sales letters and all that stuff. On. I know about marketing. I just don't know how to implement it. I don't do it. So for me personally, I am not a marketer. I know, I know everything there is to know about like marketing and stuff. Not everything, but I know a lot. But I don't use it because I'm not manipulative. I'm not gaming my audience like all the other dating coaches. I just figured if I was brutally honest with you guys and I told you guys how the game really is like, you guys would, you guys would make the decision over time to train with me, the smart ones. It doesn't matter because even if you don't, other people will. I'll get more testimonials. You have no idea how many testimonials that I do not actually uh, edit and censor the face and put, post out there. There is so many. Holy fuck. <laughs> There's so many. I could flood this fucking YouTube with testimonials. Holy shit. Like, this is just the beginning. I just don't have time. I just don't give a shit. I'm not a marketer. And this is the reason why that I'm so successful in day game. Because I'm telling you guys the exact 100% truth. 100%. You know why? Because I'm not in it for the money. If I earn the money from you guys, I, it's because you guys get results. When you take the money out of the equation, right? You're looking at the real game. You're looking at the real game. When you take the money out of the equation, and I figure by telling you guys the truth, you guys get results. When you get results, you train under me. More people train under me. That's how it is. That's how it is. It's good business strategy, right? Johnny Lee, because Johnny Lee is the world's best day game coach. More student testimonials. More results. More students train under me. Great. People brag they got five testimonials and like, yeah, I'm a god. And I was like, well, this is shit. That's like fucking less than a week for me. That's like fucking four days. <laughs> Last month, I got a testimonial every single day or second day. I still was like, <laughs> oh man. You can just look at my Facebook. Don't believe me. You can just look at a date and just, just non stop testimonials. Come on now. Come on now. Uh, let's see. Any more questions? I gotta get going. I gotta start packing. Stop. Lots of pack. I'll find another like studio or something. I'll make another studio and use it for data. I mean, teaching this stuff. Yes. Are you guys really enjoying this? If you guys enjoy, give a thumbs up and subscribe. I look at my analytics. <coughs> Half the people subscribe. Half the people do not. Maybe my thumbnail suck. I don't know what it is. Or they don't like my personality. But I'm not here to be liked by you. I'm not here to be liked by you. I'm just here to educate the world. I mean, I'm not trying to compare myself to Jesus, but Jesus was not liked by anyone. They fucking hated him. He just preached the truth. There's no money involved. And he performed his miracles like I do. And people listen. To get better, I call out the other coaches. See the same shit. It's not trying to be narcissistic. It's not that. I can brag if I wanted to. I can just say, I'm the best. You guys suck. You know, all the coaches, you know, compare. I'm not here to brag. I'm just here to open your mind. 
free you. This is not this like just free from the goddamn marketing. So I'm saying. If there's no more questions, then this is gonna end. You guys got one minute. Two minute it's two hours and fourteen minutes. That's the problem. When you guys ask me questions, you feel like, oh, I don't need to train on our John. I just ask them a few questions here. And I say, fuck you. I don't want to put a band-aid on the wood. Could you do a stand can you be a stand-up comedian? No, I'm not very funny, dude. I'm not very funny. A lot of people don't think I'm funny. The only thing I'm funny when I'm trolling other dating coaches. <laughs> right? But other than that, I'm not a very funny guy. Mm. I don't think I can be a stand-up comedian. I'm kind of like a little bit fucked up. Like most people think I'm a little bit um, ang like angry or not angry, but they don't think I'm a nice guy. And also like for me personally, I don't feel happy. I don't feel sad. I don't feel anything. I feel like all the emotions at once all the time. So that's weird. My brain's kind of fucked up. Uh, do you watch, do you, what does that mean? I have no idea what that is. I don't know what that is. These are stupid questions. What the fuck? When you look how precious my time is, right? And how much things. Do you think Asperger's is not related to inflammation in your gut or related to childhood tragedy? Um, I don't think that's related. I think Asperger's is more like a high functioning autism. So therefore, I think it's more like a hereditary thing. It's a hereditary thing. And it's not like you're 21 years old and Asperger's happens, but I think um, it is genetics. There's a lot of smart people in the world, like Elon Musk and a lot of people like that have Asperger's. A lot of very uh, smart entrepreneurs have Asperger's syndrome. It just socially impairs them. So therefore they use the money and they use their job to compensate for it. If that makes sense. So Asperger's may not be a bad thing. Like Albert Einstein has Asperger's probably. A lot of people have Asperger's. But, however, I think most of the other dating coaches, a lot of them have Asperger's. And a lot of the heart cases have Asperger's. It's, it's not normal to have it, and only a small percentage of the population has it. But I, I don't think it's anything more in genetics. It's not inflammation in the gut, for sure. It's not related to that. It's more like a, it's like a, it's like a physical problem with the brain. It's, it's born differently. Social impairment, social awkwardness. Google it now. If yeah, Google it. Google it. What were the traits of Asperger's? Lack of eye contact, weird social gestures, narrow focus, inability to make friends. You know, overly sensory, um, over sensory perceptions, shit like that. So Asperger's is a high functioning autism. Autism is like a really bad, but this is more like a, a mild autism. That's how you explain it. Look at high Lee guy, charming fucker, who self proclaimed all evidence, no proof. He's Asperger's, no facial expressions, monotone. So Asperger's, they either talk like really monotone, like it doesn't change in tonality, like Squan Casanova, or it goes like up here, like it sounds like kind of fucked up, like this. Like, hey, it, like it sounds like this or something. I don't know, like, I can talk like that. So it's either up here or like down here, but it's never like, you know, like this. Hope that makes sense. Let's see what else. Six people here, three thumbs up, wasting my fucking time. Wasting my precious fucking time. You're asking the billionaire of game, all these questions. Stupid fucking questions. So is it like hardcore life for Asperger's compared to normal? Uh, it is harder. It's harder, but Elite 30 was countering Asperger's, right? So. It is going to be harder, but if you put in the work for 30 days, you can kind of counter the effects. You can counter the effects. Improve your social skills. So, yeah. For me, Asperger's, I went for a test to see if I get Asperger's. I went to the guy who was like the top guy in the whole Canada. He invented Adderall, actually. He, he didn't invent it, but he's the guy who brought it to like a stimulant. He's like, dude, you are the least Asperger guys I know. I said, what? Give me, come on, give me some fucking diagnosis or something. You have no mental illness. Motherfucker, just give me something. He's like, no, you're too bright, John. 
You're too fucking smart. There's no way you're Asperger's. You have, you're the least likely to fucking Asperger's. What are you probably talking about? <laughs> so, okay. Whatever. Whatever. Fine. <laughs> you're the expert, doc. So, <laughs> the only mental illnesses I have is, um, I shouldn't open up about this, but I want to come. I'm not perfect. All the coaches are trying to be perfect. I, I'm, a, I'm OCD ish. I wash my hands a lot. On the boot camp, the students know I wash my hands like crazy. So I know I'm opening up about this, but I'm a germaphobe. I'm a germaphobe. And it's hard to talk about, but all the other people know that they open the doorknobs for me and shit. I don't want to touch it. I use the corner of my jacket. And also, I think with, with uh, OCD, I'm also very um, perfectionist. I mean, everything has to be fucking perfect. So I know that's like not good, but OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, starts with um, the obsessive and the compulsion. Obsession is usually the fear. So I fear if I touch germs and shit, I'm going to get sick when I eat. The, the compulsion, right, is the hand washing. And some people have what they call ritualistic OCD, which they have to do everything in the perfect order. They have to be like the shoes have to be like this. This has to be here. All the books have to be here. This has to be fucking perfect. But yeah, my mom is like a little bit OCD, so I kind of inherited that. But outside of that, I don't think I have any other mental illnesses. Some people may think I'm fucking like, like a psychopath. <laughs> Tell me why I think that, but I don't have that diagnosis either. Or you might think I'm fucking narcissistic. I may be narcissistic though. I can assure you that I am. I think I have narcissistic personality disorder. I'm not that Machiavellian, so it's not like that. that's in the mix. I'm only Machiavellian when it comes to teaching a game, but I'm not a Machiavellian person in real life. Because if I was Machiavellian, I'd be like Charisma King and gaming the audience. I'm not. I'm just telling you guys the truth. I'm here to help. But for me, for mental illnesses, I do notice like narcissism and um, OCD. So I would say that's pretty accurate. I'm very obsessive, compulsive, very, very like, I always think that what's the worst going to happen? You know, perfectionist, like Gordon Ramsay. I want everything fucking perfect. The student's fucking perfect. That's such a high standard for you. You better pull or better get laid on boot camp. I'm going to yell at you. And they always did. And for the narcissism, yeah, I, I'm extremely narcissistic. And I don't want to be. So I know all about it. That's why I want you guys to raise your self-esteem and dress nice. So you can lower the lack of self-esteem and use it to focus. Does that make sense? It's, it's trying to teach you something because I know how it works. You got to think with self-esteem and ego. Ego is a kind of like an image or something that you have of the world that you want them to see you as that, like an ego. So ego is like a different sort of piece to you. And a lot of dating coaches, they have this, like you said, a lot of ego, a lot of like narcissism. But I don't really give a fuck. Just what you see is what you get. Call me an asshole, call me whatever the fuck. Just look at my infields, look at my student results, and there's your answer. Uh, which Asians do you prefer the most? Which Asian girls do you prefer the most? Um, personally, I don't like Asian girls. They always turn their back on me and when I'm dressed well and stuff. They always, like, with a white guy, they always troll me. I get more racially abused from Asian women than any other women in the world. I have no attraction to Asian women in general. I don't get hard. I remember last time with a wingman, I played Asian women, I could not get hard. So they all look the same to me. They have like the fuck, they all look like some kind of like dollish kind of face. They, I don't know what a nine out of 10 is or a six out of 10. I seriously don't like Asian women. They don't even like Asian guys, hypergamic. Sometimes I feel like I just want to like fucking, you know, they do bad shit to them, metaphorically speaking, but I don't like them. I just, they piss me off. It's like, I, I, it's like John doesn't like Asian girls? What the fuck? No, I've only ever banged white girls. <laughs> I've only ever banged one Asian girl. I was attracted, I'm still attracted to her. Because she has like a nice yoga body, very slim waist like this. Nice triangular hips. It's kind of like a fucking teenage girl or something. Like really hot kind of body. So, and she has like big doll eyes and shit and it looks like that. So she, she has that kind of look. But I have only ever banged one Asian woman, all white girls. And mixed too. So 
yeah, mostly white girls. But Asian women, I, I, I fucking hate them. If you were to put the highest Asian woman in front of me and she's naked and you said, well, oh, fuck her, I'll say, no. No. Because I don't see anything attractive about her. So that's just honestly speaking. I fucking hate them. And everyone loves them. Everyone loves them because of their, like, you know, net, what, what do they call it? Net Tony or something? Like, they're, you know, they're cuter characteristics, as they call it. More childlike characteristics. Bigger eyes, you know, whatever, rounder face. They, they like that kind of um, quality about them. But I, I hate that. I hate that. I think white girls look way hotter. White girls is not because, oh, Latinos are not hotter, other races are not hotter than Persians. No, but white girls actually look the best. Some of them look better. So that's why I think. <coughs> More questions. It's not because of hypergamy or you like white girls because, you know, if you have kids with them one day, they'll have a better future. But it could be it. could be it. Uh, marriage is all good now, or is, it good, or is it better pulling girls? All I see is not worth having a relationship because of boring life, and you can't trust them all. Well, one thing I know from my mentor here, right, much better than me. The thing is, I asked him this question today because um, he gets so many fucking lays this month. A lot of people ask, is it worth it? You know, is it worth it? The answer is banging women is more better because he told me that other people are like his friends are all married. They, you criticize them. But now that they're married with, with a woman who's not that attractive over time, they start to regret it. They, they, they now think my mentor is right. Does that make sense? He's right because he has the freedom to choose it. If he wants to sell down, he can sell down. That makes more sense. And that's a good answer. Um, marriage is not a good idea. I would say you get a prenuptial agreement. Women will take away half of everything you earn. Because when a woman cheats on you, and she will, another guy like me who's a player, is fucking going there. Take her. Like same day late. He finds out, guess what? They get a divorce. Right? And then guess what happens? Now the guy loses half of everything. He loses half the kids. Or he loses like the kids, the custody. He loses his money. He loses his house. Marriage is not worth it. Marriage is not worth it. I don't recommend it. If you do it, get an ironclad prenuptial agreement so she gets nothing when he, she leaves. I know that sounds horrible. And she's like, oh, you don't think the marriage is going to last? Just say, like, listen, okay? The courts not favor the marriage. The courts are not favor of man. You get crucified for marriage. And half of the marriage are failing these days. Marriage is for betas. And it's just sort of like, yeah, it's good to have kids, but you don't have to be married to have kids. Am I right? If she wants to leave, she's like, here's a fucking door. That's what I think. That's what I think. All I'm going to do in the future is if I ever have kids one day, it'll be with a Russian woman. I'm going to leave her fucking life. I'm going to run away. And you say, fuck this. I don't want to raise the kids. Just fucking raise it yourself. <laughs> I know it's horrible, but I'm going to do it. I just, but she has to be the best looking woman in the world. That's, that's my end game. That's my end game. The next game is going to be more set game than lifestyle game, like a damn Brazilian and then switch over that. Find the best looking woman, rushing, impregnate her, call her life, and keep teaching day again. Until the next generation can benefit the Asians, until the next generation gets the results, and stuff, and they all get it. They stop hating on me, the Asians. They they take everything that I do like a blueprint, and they can turn it all around. Then I don't need to be here. As soon as all the Asians are getting all the white girls, my job is done. I don't have to be a dating coach, but nobody else can do it. And that's the problem. Because if you look at day game versus night game, right? Day game versus night game. So if you look at JT Trans, Squat and Cast, Nova, ABC, all of them, Asians are going right to night game. So they think they're joining game, right? But the results, it's always night game, night game, night game, night game, night game, night game. Asians are so fucking socially retarded when it comes to social skills, emotional intelligence. It's always night game, night game, night game, night game. Come on, you guys are getting funneled into a fucking trap here. You guys are stupid. You Asian guys who hate me because I don't teach night game, I'm just telling you the truth. You don't need night game. You need day game. You need to be out there. You need to be in the fucking streets here. You're paying like fucking JT Trend four grand or five grand, 
and he's only giving me night game. Night game. Night game. You should be a lawyer. Oh, sure. <laughs> I can look the part, but I don't think I'd be a good lawyer, to be honest. But I'm, I'm a bit ruthless. So I might make a perfect lawyer. So, yeah, maybe I'll make a good lawyer, but I don't want to be one. I don't like to go to school and shit and learn that stuff. For me, I, I dropped out of university. I dropped out of university. I don't believe in that shit. It just puts you in the depth. And you got to understand how the world works, okay? The world works kind of like this. It's like a four quadrant, okay? Employee. And it goes to a self-employed, which I am, self-employed, entrepreneur, business owner, and investor, ESBI. So by you staying in that employee section, all you're doing is just being an employee, right? You're working in a fucking retirement. You won't make much money if without investing and stuff. You should move to self-employed to you don't have to be a business owner. You can still have a high income skill. But eventually investor. That's how you can make the money. Hope that makes sense. So he'll be more effective writing a book and reaching millions instead of day game coaching. I'm going to make a free day game course for all the Asian men for free. I'm going to do it this month. And I'm going to go out there and demonstrate. Why am I doing this? Because it shows I'm actually helping the Asian men. Asian men are very offended by me, my existence. I, I, when they do that, they have no more excuses. They have no more excuses. Now they can't say John hates them. John's up trying to save them. So it'll be like a free, free um, course. I'll enable it just like my other two courses on YouTube. Does that make sense? I'll enable the courses. Of course, I'll upsell them for scaling, right? He'll be more effective. You can't scale a coaching business. You need to write books and reach the masses. Uh, you can scale a business using ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is a program that says if you want to buy the playbook or Elite 30, why not buy the playbook and you get a discount? You see that? I can scale the business. So I've done it before where you get like a discount. Rather than paying the full price, if you buy the Elite bundle, you get two products, you get a discount and more stars. So you can scale it that way. You can scale the business by upselling or downselling. But I don't have the infrastructure because I'm not using ClickFunnels. I don't want to be a marketer. But I have to pay the rent. I have to pay the rent, like they say. Like everyone else, I have to eat. If the perfect world understood, like if all the results are from Johnny Elite in the day game industry, I get 99% of it. The rest is just fighting for scraps. Then why are they not all coming to me? Because people don't are not in it to get laid. They're in it for self-development or some bullshit. You guys know it. It's all mental masturbation. It's like low self-esteem, high ego, and getting offended because of the high ego. It's nothing to do with like fucking. It's all about self-improvement. It's all about self-therapy. The sociopathic Aspergers are here for therapy. So, yeah, you can scale it. And I think writing a book is a really good idea. I'm gonna write a book one day. Maybe I should write the next sequel to the game because I started before Neil Strauss. I started before like. Fucking Ross Jeffries. I'm the OG. I'm the first day gamer in the world. Okay. And for the girls who are watching my YouTube live, I'm not going to tell you my age. Why you would disqualify me for my age? <laughs> Just because some of you are like fucking, one of you is like barely legal. But stop fucking, like, stop looking at my fucking videos. All right? You're in love with me? I'll fucking show it. Jesus Christ. You know who you are. Stop fucking phrasing me. I, I know your comments. Okay? Stop fucking phrasing me. The point is this. Okay? I get it. I'm an older guy. Right? Who gives a fuck? Because, you know, when you reach my age, you're the oldest shit. Me, I haven't changed. I've been forever 21. I'm going to be forever 21 for the rest of my life. So, here I am. You know, making more money than you two. Making more money on YouTube too, like fucking dumb as a rock compared to me. And being like hotter women than you two, you guys think you're the shit. Honestly, if I was the prime minister of Canada, it still wouldn't be enough for you. You're a fucking Latina. Anyways, sorry about that. Uh, any other questions?
It's just a, it's a couple of girls watches my YouTube live. It's fucked up. But they, they watch my YouTube live. But they watch it afterwards. I just want to say to you, too, um, you had your chance. The other one, like, who the fuck do you think you are? Seriously. Come on now. Too much validation for men. Your friend's hot. Uh, teach in Vegas. Okay. Who wants to learn from Vegas? Just fucking send me an email. I'll go down there for you guys. If you guys can get more than three people, I'll teach you Vegas. It's closer to British Columbia. Right? I don't like to travel to teach, but, and I don't usually do it, but if you can get three students, contact me. I'll teach you in Vegas. It's easier a fucking same day. Like, Vegas is easy. The women are down to fuck. They come there because what stays, uh, goes to Vegas or whatever stays in Vegas, as they say. So, what about cryptocurrency investments? I think it's a fucking stupid investment. I'm not saying I'm an expert in, in terms of like crypto, but I know crypto, right? It's kind of like very unstable. If you don't fully understand something, don't invest in it. The most boring investments are the best investments. The, the stuff that slowly grows, compound interest. You don't want to invest in like something you don't understand. Like blockchain technologies. And I have a lot of people that I used to know that invest in that shit. They knew all about the terms, everything that like long tail of this, that bull rush. Well, I'm not into that shit. I'm not into that shit. And I wouldn't recommend it. So <clears throat> how does cryptocurrency work? It's basically the more people that rush into a market, the more saturated get, then the prices go up. It's like plastic surgeons in the past. Before, there was no plastic surgeons and people were learning how to change your face. So when they go into that job, they're making a lot of money. But now that everyone's like fucking plastic surgeon in California, now they're making less. Does that make sense? It's the same with cryptocurrency. It all depends on how much people are going into the cryptocurrency. Then, then the price goes up. Now, I heard it gone up recently. Like, it's going to crash again. It's gone up like dramatically. But I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, do a showdown with Squat and Casanova. The dude's much taller than me and stronger too. But, you know, my skill was much higher than Damien. It's not like he will win. Uh, it's not even a fair match. I can see him lay in front of my students in the boot camps. You can see on the first approach. It's not even like the verbal shit, like whatever. But it's still, he's taller than me and stronger than me. But there's, there's no need to show down. I mean, I got more fucking testimonials than him already. More students late. Day game. <laughs> got like what 30 students late 20 30 maybe 50 i got 400 it's not even a fucking fair match so it's not even abc of attraction how many day game testimonials okay, less than like 10 400 it's not about brain it's about brain not the muscles <laughs> no no you dumb motherfucker it's not about the brain. It's about value, protector status, and pre-selection. Right? If, if it's not about the fucking muscles, then I have to bring value to it. Why do you think I'm dressing so nice? That means if I'm lacking in the muscle department, right? Remember? Looks, money, status, and I don't have the looks or the muscles. I have to get in the face. Then I have to work on the money which is what I'm doing, and also that dressing better, which is raising my status a little bit with a lifestyle. My game is superior to these fucking Indian coaches. Do you, see, do you get it now? That means whatever I lack here in the muscles, I have to make up somewhere else. You think I like wearing fucking blazers? No. No, I don't, give, I don't want to wear this shit. But women likes it. I have to compensate someone by luck. Make sense? If it's all game, right? Let's just say a person had a perfect game, right? This game would be 10 out of 10, but everything else sucks. This race is 1 out of 10. That's 11 out of 10. This money is 1. That's 12 out of 10. This looks is like um, 5 or 6. 11 plus is 17 out of 20. You see that? Not enough. So that defeats your whole argument. And don't forget, the looks are not the most important. Height matters more if you're above five foot nine or not. And second, of all, muscles matter a lot more. Muscles means protective status. Muscles mean more sexier. The face is only helping you get hotter women. The sexiness comes from like height, 
and muscles. And let me ask you a question. How many coaches are taller than me for a day game? 99%, right? I'm the shortest or one of the shortest. If you think height doesn't matter, look at online dating. What are two things they look for? Number one, race. Is white or not? Number two, height. Am I right? Huh? Am I right? You can't defeat this argument, can you? You can't. There's no, there's no counter argument. If all the women are going after like white guys, or they're going for a tall guy, disqualifying people for their height, what does that tell you about women? Pre-selection protector status. So why do you think all the Asian coaches, let me ask you a question. Why do you think all the Asian dating coaches or Asian dating coaches, why are they all taller than me? JT trends shorter, right? By two inches, five foot five. But why do you hire like a six foot three coach? Because he's too fucking short and they're having a hard time. So they need a taller guy like a Yao Ming to the roster. Get it? Come on now. Don't be fucking stupid. If it's all game, right? A, a short guy with no fucking lifestyle who doesn't like have a cool lifestyle. It's all about value. It's game over 20 or 35. Women don't give a fuck how you get to 20 or 35. They don't give a fuck. It could be anywhere. And the women are designed by evolutionary psychology. That means it forces you guys to improve your lifestyle. You're forced to improve your lifestyle. You're forced to improve your muscles. You're forced to improve your job and all these other things. Because women have like this built into their evolutionary psychology. They force men to evolve. I'll say this again. Women are forcing men to evolve. If it weren't for women's shallow behavior, we wouldn't be here because men will never improve their lives. And it's unfortunate that they're guys who are taller and stronger and stuff, you know, and better looking and white. It's unfortunate, but that's what's getting passed on these days, isn't it? That's what's getting passed on to genetics. And if race didn't matter, then why did that creepy, sh short, square jawed Asian woman marry creepy, tall white guys with it? inbred looking face. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It's about a game of value. And you know, JP, if you don't believe me, you can go fuck yourself because you know what? I have 400 testimonials. How much does Squat and Casanova have? What, 30, 35, 40? Less than 40? And they're all night game. What about day game? How, how many does he have? Answer the question, JP. Come on now. You, you can't win this argument. It's a game of value. Unless you're a natural, right? But most naturals are like, they're not short. Most naturals are at least five foot nine and they have good emotional intelligence, good social skills, which they have good game. Don't you get it? It's all about value. It's all about value. Get over that line of fuckability and you'll be fine. So if you're lacking in something, for example, you're lacking social skills and shouldn't you go get your beat 30? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Any more questions? I mean, now it's like fucking game later. I have to get out of here soon. Pack my bags and leave. This investment needs to be sold. I like that one. I like this thing. <laughs> well, guys, I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed this and you get to, you know, understand more of my mindset. But it's a game of value. John Elite is the first coach that says looks matter, race matters, money matters, status matters, emotional intelligence matters. Social skills matter. Social calibrations matter. And let me ask you a question. How come Spawn Cast Nova, most of their students are getting Asian girls, not white girls? Asian girls. And most, most of my students are getting white girls. Day game, not night game, day game. Why? Because there's a different level of skill. There's a different level of skill, obviously. And look at, let me ask you another question. Why are white dating coaches not being able to get any dating testimonials? Simple. SMV. Their value is higher.
So therefore, they're reaching the line of fuckability easier. That's simple. They don't have much game. Compliance, not compliance. They have more compliance. But since they have so much compliance, they're lazy. They don't want to use all punches. They don't want to use the jab. They don't want to use the right cross. They're mostly jabbing, but they're not using that much right cross. They use it too many fucking times. And they're not fucking hooking. They're not flirting. And they're not even touching because white people are afraid to touch. White people are afraid to touch. They just call it escalation resistance. So therefore, white people are the laziest day gamers, high SMV. They cannot transfer their fucking game and day game if their life depended on it. Therefore, Johnny Lee has lower SMV and higher game. Higher than Squat and Casanova, for sure. Obviously, higher than JT, the whole ABCs of attraction company together. They don't have any day game testimonials. Their tall coach only has one. One. But no one wants to listen to the truth because you're all idiots. That's what I'm saying. You're all stupid. You're all fucking stupid. You can't, you can't even put, put two and two together. Two and two equals four, but you guys are like, two plus two equals like infinity. Ugh. Fucking stupid. Anyways, I should get going now. That's all I say. Hope you enjoyed it. Give a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for you faggots out there who's just watching my videos and not subscribing. Time to subscribe. Anyways, this could be the last broadcast for a long time. Or I could come back for like next week. I could still schedule something, but, but it has to be sold very soon. It'll be cleaned up. I got so tired, I can't argue. You could not argue because you don't have any fucking points to argue. You want to try argue? Try it. Explain to me why why does this like a muscles not matter or height? So you're saying that um, you have no counterpoints, dude. If, if, if I'm so wrong, right, then where are all the short Asian day game coaches besides me? There's none. Come on, though. There's no, there's no counter argument. It's just called you, you got defeated so badly, just get elite 30 and stop being a faggot. Stop fucking thinking like you know everything. You think someone like me, 17 fucking years in the game, September 18 years. I've been in the game longer than some of the girls that, you know, I banged. <laughs> I'll say this again. I've been in the game longer than... It's legal in Canada. That's what I'm saying. It's legal. So, gives a fuck. If that's the case, if that's the case, and I've been in the game this long, and I taught every style, what the fuck do you know? So how has game changed in the last few months because of Instagram? 100% has been changed because um, J, JH, right? Asian men will be more successful if they have more confidence. How about more competence? Com competence equals confidence, okay? Even if they're confident, they have no social skills and they're sociopathic as shit with no emotional intelligence. They couldn't even connect with women. They couldn't even like connect and talk to her like this and be curious. As you can see in my bootcamp clips, the Asian students cannot even be curious because they have no empathy. Asian men have a long way to go. They have a long way to go and I'm not releasing my emotional intelligence course. Elite 60 is a top secret project only a bootcamp students know. Less than 10 people in the world knows it. The most powerful thing to connect but Asians cannot connect. So if Asians cannot connect, so they use height and muscles to compensate and dig in, most of them, except me and some of my students who train under me, who get good results. So I'm just saying, it's not confidence. Confidence is important. Confidence is important, but right? it's not the whole equation. Does that make sense? It's not the whole equation. Remember the equation, Asian men? You got one out of 10 for fucking status. I'm sorry, you're Asian. One out of 10. Look at the online dating charts. You're, you're last fucking place. Looks don't matter. So let's not improve the fucking fashion, right? Idiots. Come on now. Let's not improve the game. Let's not improve the social skills. Come on. Asian men have like very little social skills. And the one who have social skills, the whitewash guys, guess what? They get white women. Simple. Simple, simple, simple. They dress like a white guy, act like a white guy. 
and they they have social skills like a white guy. Come on, let's be real here. I, I heard stupid things. You guys are so deluded. How how does it feel like? Okay, Pete Park, when you go to RSD and you say looks don't matter and you just quit the fucking game. Um, the game changed for Jay, right? Is that these days if you give a DHB and try to show off, they don't believe you because they have been swiping left for one extra year. And Instagram, they're getting so much likes that Instagram has taken the the number. You know that how many likes does the woman have? They can't see it as easily. So therefore, they try to use that as their own sexual market value. The women, but you should be using Instagram. But you're creepy as fuck, Jay. Yeah? So therefore, you don't have any friends and. When you go out there and you take creepy selfies of yourself and you add on Instagram, you just gotta creep them off. You need a cooler lifestyle, find some activities to do. I was at a horse racing event, you know, like a week and a half ago. Lots of hot, the hottest women in Vancouver were there, so I was day gaming them. My mentor got like a fucking blowjob, which is awesome. Like a same day blowjob. Uh, I mean, Asian men would become more successful. Uh, I mean, social and emotional intelligence skills are 50% plus you say games, but you're getting 75% while you're studying teaching. So it comes from brain. Um, you're talking about game, right? JP? Right here. Right? Looks, money, stats, game, right? Out of 10. Why are you not focused on these three? Looks, money, stats. Because it doesn't exist in your mind. But it exists in a woman's mind, doesn't it? See? You look at this, you don't look at this. It's not brains. This is like, looks does not come from your brain. Money might come from your brain, so money also comes on your clothing and the apartments, the mansions you live in, your sports cars, nice watches, your nice clothes. Status. You can't brain your status if you're, if you're, fucking, Asian, you're a fucking Asian guy. Come on now. Don't be an idiot. Okay, why, why argue? Why not just accept what I'm saying, all of you? If you all accept what I'm saying, you'd be just like all my other testimonials. It's that simple. If you just fucking accept what I'm saying, you get the same results as all my other students. Why resist? It's like Dan Pena, the trillion dollar man who I met, right? I met him. You all saw it. Or some of you have saw it. I met Dan Pena. A trillion dollar man. And he created that much wealth. But when he's giving you a fucking strategy, like I am, the billionaire game, and you're arguing with me, you have no fucking testimonials. Your opinions is facts, like a fucking sociopath. You're autistic. Like you have Asperger's, they can tell. And your game is just like all oh, escalation. I can read you very well, JP. It's a POA disease. You have it. I can see three, dude. And you're deluded as shit. You're a little bit of sociopathic. I'm not stupid, dude. And you're arguing with me. It's, it's not about ego. It's more like, you want to slow down your own results? Fine. Go out there and say it's not about like social skills. Don't get elite 30. You just see what happens. You're fucked. Don't improve your fashion. It's just going to make it harder on yourself. You and I know it. Okay. You guys have this delusion that all you need is confidence and then you're good enough. This idea comes from RSD, so that creates non-compliance. Non-compliance. If you have enough value, you work on your social skills, you make some friends, you go to cool events, guess what? You are enough. You have a Western haircut, you act like a white guy, you dress like a white guy, you'll be fine. You don't do this, you don't listen to my advice, you don't work on your social skills, you don't even know how to fucking talk. You don't have to, any, any fucking emotions like this. You're fucked. You're fucked. And let me ask you guys, who's, who's into fucking RSD nation? How, how have you guys done besides quitting? All of you. You're like, oh, let's hate John, right? Fucking John's trying to save you, dumb motherfuckers. I, I think Asians are the dumbest species in the world. They're subhuman. Asian men. One in five will marry a white woman. One in five will not procreate. Congratulations, you dumbasses. 20, that means like one billion Asians are gone in 100 years. I was trying to save them, but is it worth saving? I wrestle with that question. Are you guys worth saving? Not sure anymore. Should I just focus on that one in five? 
when they bang more like women? Are Asians worth saving? Or maybe the Asian women who are going for white guys are trying to send you guys a message that you guys are not good enough. Just just be po like be positive, right? Just ignore your genocide. You guys love being genocided. You guys need a good kick in the ass. But you guys are just so offended by me. And you guys are so deluded. If you guys were really enough, you should be able to get white women. But you tell me, John, I don't like white women. I like Asian girls. Yeah, right. When you hear Squat and Cast Nova saying, oh, my students like Asian girls. Yeah, right. Nobody likes Asian girls. You think a single student might actually like Asian girls? Very little. For the Asian students, they're mostly into white girls. <laughs> a majority of them are into white girls. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Oh, they like Asian girls. Bullshit. This world is so fucking deluded. It's like I'm talking to a bunch of people. I don't want to look down on people. I want to say, like, listen, you can be up here. You can be up here. You can elevate. And nobody has a self-esteem to address. Well, nobody has a self-esteem to improve. Nobody has a self-esteem to coach under me. I'm not saying nobody, but some of you don't. The truth is not about me. You guys see the testimonials. You guys can see more. I will flood it. I will flood the YouTube with so many infields and so many boot camp clips and so many testimonials out part of the fucking Red Sea like Moses. You all know it. You know what? I, everything I said, I backed it up. But guess what? So it's not me. It's about you. Your self-esteem is low. Your self-esteem is too low because you don't like yourself. You don't believe in yourself. And your mindset's fucked. And the mindsets of the students who come to train with me, they get it. These are the kind of guys who understand race matters. They understand that height matters. They understand fashion matters. They understand money matters. They understand that game matters. They understand emotional intelligence matters. They understand, you know, social skills matter. And sometimes it's not so much about the, it's about the brain, but it's the physical brain. If the frontal lobes were not working very well, they cannot empathize. The front, frontal region, frontal cortex, prefrontal cortex, frontal lobes. I can get very deep into neuroscience if I want to. You guys won't even understand most of the terms anyways. I could talk about, you know, I could, but it's not like you guys understand all that shit anyway. So long story short, long story short, Asperger's is like the brain is like not normal. So it's not so much about a, a brain issue or a software issue. It's a hardware issue. Sociopaths or psychopaths, they don't have any sort of empathy and parts of their brain like a big starfish shape does not light up. It's not light up. So I'm just saying, if it's not lighting up, so the right things are not coming out, they're not flowing out. Does that make sense? So you're talking about emotional intelligence comes from the brain. Yeah, but the hardware is fucked. So if the hardware or computer is fucked, the screen is displaying the wrong shit. That's why you don't get the emotions from it. Does that make sense? A lot of stupid questions. When I have stupid questions, then it's wasting my fucking time. I stop this recording. So any last questions? The last one, let me answer one more. If it's a stupid question, I might even answer it. You're, you're talking to Dan fucking Pena, you know, or the Asian Dan Pena, the trillion dollar man of game. The guys with the most results, most steel results, all that shit. My results are okay. Is better than most of you. The same day lay shit's like fucking amazing. That's my specialty. That's my specialty. So that's my niche. There are many metrics for the game, but mostly bang taller women or women way above my look scale, race scale. That's what I'm into, or much younger. If you look at my infields. It depends on who, it really depends. There is no limits to what I can do. But you guys aren't fucking listening, you're idiots. How long would it take for you guys to fucking listen? How many more infields do you need to see? Like I said, I can post an infield like every single week. I'll never run out. Moron. Why did I not post it before? Well, there's a lot of politics involved, that's why. 
a lot of politics involved. And I want to have complete control over my new fields. And boot camp clips. The testimonials. This is my fucking system. It's always been my system. My uncredited system, that's okay. It happens. Um, so are you switching your game more to the next day lay instead of same day lays? No, no, no. It's you can still same day lay, but if you're doing number closes, basically you have an Instagram, okay, to the THV, to demonstration of higher value. That means you can it's a setup game. Because you gotta think of the um, the day game as hunting. And you gotta think of the setup game, the social circle, the Instagram, the cool lifestyle as the farm. You're basically bringing the animal that you're tranquilizing into the farm through the Instagram. Once it's in the Instagram, then then it grows the farm. Does that make sense? That's what it is. That's the new game. It's not the new game. It's always been my game, but it's just more apparent now. It's just more used now. And this is the game I was taught five years ago by my mentor. Here, I didn't understand at the time. It took me that many years to understand that he was teaching me all this. I taught a lot of new things. So after we sell this place, the game's gonna be field tested again. I wrote everything in this red velvet book, which is really cool. It's almost like a the secret book of the naturals. <laughs> the field of the naturals here, inner circle. The real POA secret society inner circle is coming. So it's gonna be upgraded again. The other guy taught me, the other white guy taught me, he begs women who are like eights and nines and even tens. Somehow he can, he's able to get that. He doesn't have like a super high lay count, but he gets like mostly nines and tens. <laughs> kind of weird, but he's a natural. He's good social skills. He knows his social skills are so good. He knows everyone in a certain United States part of the States. So you can still sing DLA, okay? In my system, you can still sing DLA, but the number of closes is like I said, it's like a funnel if we're talking about marketing. It's kind of like the lead magnet could be the number of clothes, but the lead magnet is the Instagram. And when you get upsell, you get upsell to hanging out, which is the lifestyle. Upselling again, they come on out. Downselling, whatever, they go back on Instagram. So it, it just revolves around that. Retargeting them is through your Instagram, Instagram stories over and over until they come back out and bang. It just, it's like a constant uphill, it's like a constant snowball effect. It gets bigger and bigger. Hope that makes sense. It just has been the real game all along. It's always been this way. It's just the same delay thing. Right? It's always like that. It's more of a niche. Why did I choose same delay? Because I didn't have Instagram before. So I didn't know how to use stuff like that kind of shit. I didn't know how to use Tinder. I didn't know how to do night game. I didn't know any of that shit. I'm kind of old. So it's not my thing. But however, I always try to max maximize the whole text game. You try and maximize every other piece of the game. I'm old fashioned. I'm old fashioned. I'm an OG, the first day gamer in the world. So, since I was the very first one, I don't know how, how these guys call themselves OGs and all that shit. Back then, I remember all of them Ross Jeffries, you know, Mystery, I also know like um, David D'Angelo. I know all those people, with all, all the OGs back then. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know them all. Like, I know all of them. I was from that generation. But these guys did not evolve. That's the problem. I always evolve. If I don't evolve every three months and change the game and improve it and field test it, then I won't get the testimonials and it would be left in the ground. My fellow Asians would suffer. Look, don't just look at me as a five foot seven Asian guy that you hate. Look at me as the smartest motherfucker on the planet Earth who's the only one in the world who can do this job. There is going to be no one that ever replaces me. Ever. There's not gonna be another five foot seven day gamer who's gonna take over the fucking world like me. I'm here to save it, the Asian men. But they don't care. They're stupid. Maybe they deserve to die and be genocide. Next question. You guys are enjoying this, right? Give it a thumbs up. If you're not, then I'm wasting my fucking precious time. It's already 648 here. If I don't see more thumbs up, you don't care. Why waste my fucking precious time? Why waste my fucking precious time? All right, I guess this is it.
thank you for you know watching this thing. Why use some cream on your face? You look really young. Use some. How old do I look like, JP? I don't use any cream on my face. Nothing. I use absolutely nothing on my face. I'm genetically like this, and I can lose weight or gain weight depending on I ate like three pizzas in a row and church's chicken. 23 to 24 max. Oh my God, I am so much older than that. But the girls are trying to figure out, right, what my age is. I guess you guys will never fully know. But if I'm in the game for like almost 18 years, I'm older than I look. But ladies, like I said, when you get to my age, you're gonna look old as fuck, you already do. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you're gonna lose your ass on me. Why blame me, the guy who's has the fountain of youth. I, it's a good thing I'm younger looking because I can do this job for like longer. You know what I mean? As a day gamer for the rest of my life, almost. I, I don't physically age. I don't phys you can see I don't physically age, but you can see my hair, right? It should be like a lot of white hairs. Let me open the lights. There's the lights. You can see some gray hairs and shit all over here too. I'm much older than I look. I see Asian always looks younger. Not always. Some don't look older. You see that? I hate having fucking white hair. I got a lot of them. Whatever. I got a lot of white fucking hair. Why as fuck? <clears throat> I wonder where the sound's coming from. Is it coming from here or is it coming from here? If it's coming from there, then why the fuck am I even um, wearing earphones? Oh, whatever, whatever. But yeah, I do look very young. And um, <coughs> yeah, one of my ex-girlfriends is quite young too before. She was like, I'm not gonna say her age, but let's say she was legal. But whatever, I just don't age. I'm not injured, but that's the truth. Uh, what else? More questions? I, how do I feel looking younger? It's actually pretty cool. But when you're growing up, right? You know, when I was in my twenties, women are always thinking I was very young. They're always thinking I was a fucking like a teenager. So therefore, older women always hated my guts. But I was older than they were <laughs> at the time. I was older than they were, and they're like, well, what the fuck? And they, once you tell them that you're real age, they walk away. So if that's the case, and I'm banging like hotter, younger women, that, even these hotter, younger women that likes me, you know, like, you know, the white version of you, but much prettier, then I don't give a fuck what they think. Because I can replace them. And that's what I like. But yeah, it is a huge advantage to look younger. And it's not normal. Sometimes you see other Asian coaches, they look young too, but they have like eye bags and shit and their wrinkly skin, like leathery skin. I don't have that. So there's no eye bags. I don't have eye bags. I don't have any wrinkles, right? My hairline's always been the same. It always has a little bit up here. It's always like that. Um, I always have like fucking white hairs all over. Ever since I was 20 years old, white hairs are popping up everywhere. That's why I'm kind of dyeing my fucking hair all the time to brown. I'm not trying to look like a K-pop artist. I just, I fucking hate white hairs. If you look at it, there's tons of white hairs in there, all over. So I had to secretly bleach it, shit out. But since 20 years old, I mean, what the fuck? When I first saw it, I was like, why the fuck is this growing here? There's like strands of white hair everywhere. I was like, I didn't know how to fucking bleach it. It was so annoying. It was so fucking annoying. But yeah, so most of my life, I look young. I, you always think that's a good to have the fountain of youth. But when you're Asian guy and women are much like older looking than you, like you're older than them, it just is really hard in terms of dating when I grow up. It really was. It's, it's confusing as fuck. And right now, when I still look like, like you said, 23, 24 max, guess what? I ate three pizzas in a row. And if, if I didn't eat for like a day and a half or fast, I'll look even younger. 
I don't eat for two days, guess what? I look even younger. I can look 21 again. It just depends on my weight. So it is a huge advantage from and a huge disadvantage. Don't, don't think it's always a good thing to be Asian. But if I had to choose between looking older and looking younger, obviously I'll choose younger every time. So this is how I'm still able to bang younger women because I look younger. It's just how it is. So I know that's, that's life. They're into it. Who gives a shit? They're happy. I'm happy because they're hot. This is why a lot of coaches, when they go for older women, it's like fake tits. Their faces are sagging like shit. They're going after that shit because they're looking older because they don't want to look creepy with the younger women. So they say, oh, that's bad. No, it's because you're old looking fuck. And your game sucks. You got to go for older looking women. Like a fucking leftover. <laughs> but anyways, more questions. This is the last one. Three likes only. I gotta leave. But yeah, life is unfair. And also, like, like, like I said, I'd rather like, look a little bit older, but I can't change it. Can't fucking change it. I can't change it at all. And even if I have white hairs and I tell people my Asian, it's not like they fucking believe it. Nobody fucking believes it. So. Well, if there's no more questions, I just want to say that compliance, not compliance. Compliance. I tell the girls I'm like 24, 23, 22. Non-compliance, I tell them I'm <laughs> Right? It's, it's a game of compliance. It's a game of value. It's a game of adapting. That's all it is. That's all it is. It's a game of adaptation and value. More questions? No more questions? And that's it. What? I guess this is where it ends. What a fucked up way to end things. What a fucked up way to end things. But for all the times I've been able to stream in the mansion, it's been fine. So right now, what's next? The book will come later. The first book is going to be, instead of the art of war, it's going to be like the science of vegan. <coughs> Rewritten. Video form to explain. My game is exactly the same as the art of war. The Chinese strategy book is identical. So in some ways, since both of them are exactly the same, I can explain my game <coughs> system and strategy much better. I hope that makes sense. Uh, neighbors are walking again. I stopped this shit. And after that, this will not be released until another year or two. The next one that's going to be released is going to be, um, let me think. It's the free course. Free course is one sampler, one opener, one fucking transition, one flirt, one tease, one social comfort, one incident line. Just copy it experiment with it it works already enjoy it go out there and apply it and when you get results you'll be like i want more coaching it's like us it's like a fucking value ladder a value ladder so there's no more questions like i said i don't, I don't apologize for my for anything i just say whatever is on my fucking mind i know it's stupid but i'm gonna say it anyways like I said, hate on me. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Hater is going to hate. Hater is going to hate. Hate John. I don't give a fuck. You know what John is going to be like? God. John is the only guy that you cannot really fight in the game ministry. John is the only one you can't fuck with. That's all I'm saying. Non-stop student results. But having said that, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys like, got to understand more of my world. I enjoy my job. I'm here to help the Asians. One day you'll realize it. Johnny Lee out. Oh, where the fuck is the end of the stream? Right here. Bye. Just go on my site, get a chorus or something. And end the stream now.